Right, howdy y'all, Jackson here with Dick Jerk Studios, and welcome back to another episode of Outside the Hash. <laughs> Feel free to introduce yourself, as always. Hi, I'm Kyle. <clears throat> Hi, Nate here with my best friend, and uh, Kyle's favorite, Trent Richardson, Cardio's legend, uh, and Colt's legend, too. Remember when you traded the first round pick for him? Yeah, Classic. you mean traded Johnny Manziel for John, him? Yeah, Johnny Manziel. The, the goat. Everybody Oops. loves Johnny Manziel. All right. All right. We uh we ready to get started? I am. All right. Yes, sir. So, uh, so you should want to start. Who wants to kick off the UFL this week? Uh, I guess I can start it. All right. All right. Let me full screen this. All right, so uh, first up, I had the uh, St. Louis Battlehawks against the Memphis Showboats. Uh, you know, this game was close for the first two, three quarters. Uh, after the half, uh, the <laughs> Memphis Showboats did not come out of the locker room and uh, proceeded to give up 12 in the uh, fourth quarter. Uh, it seems like neither offense really wanted to play in the third, but that and that's okay. Uh, but, yeah, uh, complete blowout in the fourth. Uh 32 to 17. Almost had less pa- they, they had 60 pass yards. Almost had less yeah. yards than McCarron uh, attempts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I was... Memphis uh, is so bad. Yeah, I was got, about to say. They so, got sacked a uh, lot. Uh, Darius Victor had almost as many yards as the offense in uh, Body less attempts. Carried. I don't know. They should just ran the whole time. Uh, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have done much better. I guess, to be better. fair, Jacob Sailors did not... Uh, their combined passing and strategy. running is still lower than the Battle Hawks rushing. That's insane. Yeah, it was not a good performance. I don't understand I guess, how they got 17 points to begin with. Because it's my team. Like I said, <laughs> we're last or first. There's no such thing as the middle for my teams. No such thing. The Dallas Jackals are the sole exception to that rule. Uh, in terms of rushing, uh, Jacob's uh, Sailors uh, had a great performance, uh, averaging almost seven yards a, a carry. Averaging nice yards a carry. Get it right. Yeah, I think that made fair. him the leading rusher in the league. Really? I was going to say, yeah. he's, he's been popping off each week. Well, that and Adrian Martinez didn't play. He, I think he got hurt or something. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, our other... Our other running backs were really good, so I would have figured he would have also been up there. Uh, I can't remember what's his last name. Excuse me. I can't remember his last name right now, but he didn't get any uh, touches this week, it looks like. Uh, it's like... Yeah, I, I can't remember his last name. It's because Mark Thompson name. stole his essence to be able to yep. play this week. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, but that just about sums up that game. Uh, then we had the... The nice short game between the Birmingham Stallions and the D.C. Defenders. Uh, this game was closer than it should have been, uh, but, you know, uh, I'm just happy D.C. lost. Um, it, it, it looked like uh, D.C. had a good game, all things around, uh, all things considered. Uh, Tamu played very well, uh, but it looks like their run game really held them the, back the, the most. The, the... The problem was that Birmingham uh, fumbled the ball twice inside the DC 15 at the start oh. of the game. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> then, uh... Matt Corral yeah. moment. Yeah, it it wasn't wasn't a bad game. A lot of rain delay. Um, probably yeah, should have rain just... delay was almost longer than the game. Yeah, yeah, brutal. Uh, it definitely kept DC in it. Uh, but, you know, Birmingham, luckily... Shout out to so. all the fans that took off their shirts and were dancing in the rain. Yeah. Birmingham? Uh, that up, yeah. That should sum up my game. All right. All right. Go over to my stream. <clears throat> all right. Uh, we move on to my 3-1 and one, San Antonio Brahmas. If my teams ain't first, they're last, baby. This one's this team's towards the top. 
Final score, Brahmas win 19 to 9. Started off up 10 to nothing and uh, scored another touchdown in the second and slowed down scoring wise for the rest of the game. But uh, Michigan couldn't really uh, uh, capitalize either. <clears throat> um, total yards, San Antonio out, uh, gained Michigan 55 to um, 251. Uh, San Antonio threw the ball much more efficiently than Michigan having a 7.1 yards per attempt versus Michigan's 5.2 on top of the 120 extra passing yards. Um, Michigan did run the ball really well uh, to their credit, just fell behind um, really early 19 to three. It just couldn't, which prevented them to establish the run game in the second half. Um, San Antonio did not run the ball well. Um, Averaging Trent Richardson, averaging Trent Richardson yards per carry, um, but like Trent Richardson, they were scoring touchdowns. So, um, Quentin Dormandy, twenty-three for thirty-seven, two hundred sixty-nine yards, uh, touchdown and a pick. Uh, Michigan's best rusher was for, uh, EJ Berry, four rush for forty-nine yards. It kind of split off <coughs> between a couple guys, um, so that helped them. Uh, <coughs> A little bit there. Uh, Justin Smith was the leading receiver for San Antonio. Seven catches for 107 yards. Michigan had three turnovers to San Antonio's one. And the key differentiator here was, um, besides who was already mentioned, uh, San Antonio capitalized in two red zone touchdowns. Michigan did not score any. So, uh, And the key play of the game was my boy, uh, Danny Etling, Patriot legend, preseason legend. Uh, through a game ceiling interception in last ditch effort to pull off the comeback through it's about two and a half minutes left to go. And uh, San Antonio kept the ball from there forward. So um, I pretty much sealed their fate there. Um, and San Antonio has an easy win next week against my once again, team in last Arlington renegades. So um, that, <coughs> that is all I had for that. <coughs> Um, so I'm clicking out of share my screen and it's being done. There we go. Yes. All righty. UFL. So this is the game that Kyle already covered. So. Here's just some slightly more in-depth statistics from it. Uh, now to the game I have to cover. The Arlington Renegades at Houston Gamblers. A battle of uh, of un, uh, uh, of pe teams that hadn't had wins yet. Losers. The battle of losers. So, uh, as you can see... <laughs> I couldn't find it. I, I forgot it favorited. I'm dumb. Yeah, yeah but alright. But as you can see that uh, Houston pretty much won all the uh, categories. They had more rush yards, more pass yards, more first downs, more total yards. <clears throat> Less penalties. Uh, teams converted, both converted one field goal. Uh, they both... <laughs> <coughs> well, uh, Houston hit one an of extra the... point. No, no, they missed one of their extra, you know. You're not shanking extra point in this league. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the... Keep forgetting. So anyways, uh... I gave Arlington Star to their defensive tackle who had two sacks. So that's two sacks for a defensive tackle is kind of impressive, to be honest. And then uh, I gave uh, <clears throat> MVP for the Gamblers to uh, the man, the missed legend, reigning offensive player of the year, Mark Thompson, who had been missing for the last three weeks. Finally getting Bob to play a game. played their best player and they won a game. <laughs> yeah. He had what nine carries for 34 concept. yards, a touchdown, and a catch. So, yeah. So, uh, it was a good week for the home teams. <laughs> it went 4-0. Oh, I did well. I did well. Yeah. I needed that. Yeah, so. Yeah, you needed that bad. <laughs> yeah, you make up for your really bad week one. So, Kyle leads at 13-3, and three, and then me, both me By and... By a lot now, yeah. <clears throat> me and Nate are both 10-6. So here is how the standings list and your SRS is. So. It's 12.4, baby. 
Yeah. And then 9.3, baby. Second Interesting highest. that it has, that it's favoring the Brahmas with the SRS. <laughs> yeah. Because we're a better team. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll just point to the scoreboard. I'll point to uh, who? Who cares? Scoreboard, scoreboard. Who cares? Uh, I, rain count? Rain count? Two. Uh, Brahmas have zero. <laughs> uh, I, but I'm referring to another team now. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. Pretty soon they'll have as many wins as they have not. rings. Maybe. <laughs> In theory. <laughs> Yeah. Battlecox Battle fans better keep their mouths shut until they actually win something. Because imagine going seven and three and not make it to playoffs. So I'm just saying. Yeah, and the playoffs are their biggest off, rival. If we pull that feet off again this year, you're I, not. It's you literally. Won't. It'd be possible. hard because you need the defenders to turn themselves around all the way. I mean, they're two and two. Yeah. They they would have to basically win out. Yeah. All right. So here's our league leaders. I pulled out the the full. Uh, stat line for everybody, so you can see a little bit more than just their passing yards or just your yardage. <clears throat> so, Luis Perez leading the league in passing, but AJ McCarron not that far behind. Less AJ McCarron back to back MVPs. Yeah. Congrats! That's the only thing you'll ever win. Yeah, and Jacob Thaler uh, moved to move to one with his hundred yard game. Nice. It helps that Adrian Martinez only had one carry. I mean, to be fair, with a rain delay like that, I feel like they don't want to run the ball. I don't know why. More tripping hazard, I guess. I don't know. Well, I think he got hurt because he. Well, oh, or, or maybe, oh, or maybe we that. started corral this game. I didn't. I didn't see the start of the game. I just saw that corral was in. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and uh, Marcus Sims is the leader in receiving. <clears throat> and then uh, the kickers are leading the way over in total scoring right now. Sounds about right. Which means they're getting gypped because they're not getting their extra PATs either, you know? They could have even bigger scoring lead. Yep. Alright, and here is the pick on... Brahmas. Yeah, I'm going Brahmas. What about you, Kyle? Stallions. Give me Renegades. Kyle, going to go Renegades. Stallions. Uh, yeah, give me Stallions. Battlehawks. Uh, ooh, this is actually going to be a hard matchup, but I'm going to keep it with the Battlehawks. Uh, no, let's start the let's start the Battlehawks claps here. <laughs> I like the way you worded that. I'm uh, going defenders now. <laughs> <laughs> Panthers. Uh, I had to take one home game. Uh. I, I put this in the wrong. The show bolts are garbage, dude. Panthers are. They should win this. Yeah. Yeah, I, Panthers on paper are the better team here. And let's so I'm going to go, I'm really gonna go Panthers. Yeah, give me Panthers. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So, on to the tier list. Uh, Michigan moves down for sure. Uh, you can move Houston out of F tier. Michigan lost to uh, uh, San Antonio, right? So we can put them behind. Yep. Yeah. We'll keep them at A right now until we see more of a collapse from them, you know? Uh, uh, we, yeah. Move, uh, Memphis okay. down to D. Yeah. yeah, Memphis down to D, and then I'm fine with you that. You can probably move DC to B. No, no. Uh, I, I feel like there's I no guess they're two and two. Purpose. Yeah. It just, we're still at that awkward point. I think next week we'll have a better idea with filling it, yeah, out each uh, yeah. slot. I'll go first for LFA. I have two teams, so I'll go first. Okay. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. LFA. Bam. Okay. All right, first game. I'm embarrassed by this game. Also, I once again they didn't. I didn't see stats. Yeah, but, um, they hadn't posted yet. So, I checked an hour ago. That's okay. <clears throat> um, I'm truly embarrassed as a Cadios fan. 
Uh, one of the worst uh, games they've ever played since I've known their existence. They only won by two points. They were losing a vast majority of this game. I don't think they had a lead the entire time until they scored the game-winning touchdown. Uh, not a lot of time to spare. What can I say? I think I'm worried. Uh, it's a really hard being a Cardinals fan. Uh, and once again, I spelled Cardinals <laughs> wrong. Uh, that one was just a typo, though. Um, Cadulios. Uh, Cadulios. <laughs> I was typing very fast. I was also typing angrily. Uh, only winning two by two points. This team is poverty. They should just ship Jeremy Johnson to the Galgos where they know how to run a real franchise. Um, but the key play of the game was Jeremy Johnson threw a TD pass to Rashad Still with a minute 17 left to win the game. Pull away. Um, it's really the only team that can compete with the Cardios. No surprise there. And uh, next game is a win against the Galos Negros. <clears throat> Shot fired at you, Kyle. No, no, no. We, they're going to win. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's facts. It's not even close. Um, it's facts. Um, and then I can't believe I'm having to present right now on this uh, team, they... but here we are. The Galgos pulled away. The <coughs> They're on a winning streak right now. I never thought I'd say that. Um, I really hope they kind of take a step back, though. I really want them to stay towards the bottom of the basement and not become mid. Because that would mean I'd have two teams in the mid now. And I can't afford that. So uh, I need the Galgos to start sucking again. I need weeks one through four, vintage Trayvon Boykin. But nevertheless, uh, they were losing a good chunk of this game. It was kind of back and forth. But uh, the Galgos pulled away in the second half. Um, got that dub. Uh, the key differentiator of this game was the Dinos or Cheeks. Dinos or Cheeks. Uh, they might as well just fold the franchise. How'd this team make the championship i don't know and the key play of the game yes the key play of the game is in fact is this the dagger oh! they failed to convert the fourth down with a minute 20 left that's the dagger this team sucks and uh i forgot to see who the galgos play next if they i is. mean we'll, we'll see in a few minutes here we'll see in a few minutes so yeah um, yeah, I usually don't do who they're playing next because we're just going to cover this. We do the pick them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, that's so, all I had. I'm up. Yep. All right. All right. So I had uh, the Raptors at the Ga uh, Gaios Negros, and uh, the Raptors beat them 25 to 14. Wasn't able to watch this game, but this one's even more upsetting. Um, you know, I, I thought the Gaios uh, Negros could win this, but uh, apparently they're just mid like the other half of the league. Uh, next week is not going to be easy. That's all I can say. Uh, and then, good job on the Raptors. Uh, just held it down much better. Uh, neither team wanted to play in the third, and the, the Gaios Negros just didn't want to play in the second half, I guess. But... Just how it is. That's my only game. Drunkard Light. All right, LFA. So, <clears throat> I had one game. It was the it game here. Pretty shocking. The uh, FA just smoked the Reyes. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it was. They had uh, at least they had two pick sixes. Yeah, it was just. Um, I wish we had the stats, because I wanted to see how bad their quarterback played, because uh, it was not a good game. I think 20, 28 points is the most points the half has scored this season. They did break 20 last week on their other win, but they're just not, not good on offense, and somehow they were good. They're also not good at defense, usually, but <laughs> but uh, today every, today everything worked out. Imagine letting the Hefes get on a win streak. Yeah, two games. Might even get to three. Uh, in the fun these lost, Sage choked it away at the end. Dang. Yeah. Oh, I did terrible this home, week. Home teams again had a very good... Uh, I lost them. my lead. Oh. Yeah, so... Uh, me and uh, <laughs> Nate are at the top here and Kyle's only a game behind, but... Still puts them in third because. 
I choked my lead <laughs> away. Damn. Yeah. Just all, th all, four, all three of us whiffing on the Dinos. Stupid Dinos. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Galgos. Yeah. Here is how the uh, the standings look. Yeah. The uh, Cadillo is really in a league of their own. I actually think that as or as went down. I thought it was twenty two something last. It week. probably did go down because he only won by two. Oh. Yeah, they gave and up a the lot team of points. This is why I'm embarrassed. Or 16 points I, behind you. In the other absolutely team. pathetic performance. But, I guess say. I mean, the Fundies used to be up there like two weeks ago that you guys were close, but then they had those two really awful games. Shout out to the Galgos. They have negative nice. I'm proud of my boys. Yeah. What I think is impressive is uh, the Fundadores only have uh, one point less on offense than the Cadios. Well, they have a really good offense. Yeah, their defense is not good. In you know, it's in large part because the Cadios started off really slow offensively. Yeah. Um, but they figured it out after. It, it, it just took them a couple games. Yeah, Fundy's uh, just had a really rough past three weeks. Yeah. So, um, at, least, uh, at least you don't have the Reyes defense. Uh, Fundy's are on a three-loss streak now, right? Yep, yep. The start three now. Raptors, Caudillos, wow, that's brutal. To to their credit, they were you know, They're gonna lose this defending week. champs, but Yeah. The Dinos is um, really bad but, one. Yeah, the Dinos <laughs> the, Yeah. Yeah. But Okay. Yeah. Only one I think it's impressive to see the Hefe's not in last and not in second to last. Yeah, Hefe they're up there. Thanks for the extra and bye week. Sir? I don't say it's weird to see the Galgos Negro, the Galgos Negros in the middle of the pack. Yeah, yeah, it might be a little too early to say it, but yeah, uh, Hefe's are in a wild card spot right now. Mm -hmm. I think everybody didn't because uh, I think it's the top six. Top six. It. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred. The Rays get it. W. They're winning it all. Yeah. Come back. It'd be impressive if they got in at this point. Yeah, it's because they're gonna sign Tom Bra uh, Tomito Bradito. It, it's not that hard. They're only a game. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, they need to. Yeah, they're seven games in. They uh, they don't have much yeah, left. They have. Anyway, here they have here... two games left. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they have to win out and then get lucky. Yeah. Here's the uh, here's how the league uh, leaders are from last week. It's still. <laughs> Two weeks ago, or so not including this week's stats because they didn't have this week's stats up. <clears throat> so, well, the I... Mexico's quarterback, I didn't realize he only had one interception. That's that is crazy. Impressive. Yeah, so he might. Jeremy Johnson, like half of his are awful. Yeah. He'll just literally lob it up in the red zone and just white it a linebacker. <laughs> yeah, that's He's actually... done that like four times this year. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Hey, he still yeah. gets wins. He, he relies too much on his defense. I think it's just he has one bad play a game. That's really it. Fair. He doesn't rely on his defense. He's he's the second best quarterback in the league, debatably best, but I'd probably say Shelton. Yeah, after he's probably a team. tiny bit better. But. Yeah, all right. So, here is the pick. Adios. Um, oh, they uh, were first. Mexico at Fun. Oh, That's a good game. That could be a good game. Um, um, I'll go Fundy because the the home teams had a good week, and then I think I'm probably gonna kind do of the same. Off. Yeah, give me the same. I think Fundy's is more likely than not Oops. here. Cadios. Uh yes, Cadios. Uh, then give dinos me the dinos right. or dinos. They they deserve. They're gonna. They should deserve dinos after this. Week. I'm going dinos. This feels like a trap game, though. I'm just. It uh, is I a just... trap game. This feels like a uh, with how this, league this is one gone, is the trap what? game. Uh, it's not a trap game. They're both awful. Yeah, but both just one. We're going three no ba three game win streak, baby. Let's go. You know what? I'll go with my team. Give me Trayvon Boykin. Kyle, guys. that's a dumb decision. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with my team because it's one team that started off on four and got two wins in a row. Versus another that started off on four and got two wins in a row. I have to. I'm just doing it for the sake of a. The, at least one of the half. The half. Yeah. The half a Mexicans win is really impressive. Actually, actually, I'm going to play even risky the Rays here. Win with impressive because of how. I'm going to play risky here. 
You're gonna give go me, tie? Give me the Rea no, no, I'm giving taking Reyes over Dinos. Oh, okay. He wants He wants the trap game. That might work out. I'm tempted, but I'm it, not it is a trap. I'm too scared to do it. It is a trap. Well, I think Kyle might be right. I would not be surprised. Yeah, if anybody could uh could blow it, it could be the Dinos. All right. Um, I think the Rays are not... alone in the uh, Hefe's here now. We got the Mexicans in because they lost to the Hefe's. Oh, so don't... they they can go back to. All right, move the Yeah, drop. Put the put the Blackhawks and average Blackhawk enjoyer um tier. Yep. We want to keep the uh, the Fundy Flight Close game with the cut. Yeah, Fundy's fun fun deserve. Uh, I do know I... they're. You can move the Raptors up. They're four and two. That's to yeah, call Raptors them D tier. Yeah, crazy. Them I'd put them in D tier. Uh, they're yeah, four and fair. two. Fair, fair. We did kind of under rank them. Uh, well, I tried telling you guys last week. You guys didn't want to move them. I was just nope. like, it's kind of crazy to have a team three and two in D tier. <laughs> well, who are their wins? But, yeah, and not who were good, their but still, their, their losses weren't like, good either. When we get to Major League Rugby, the Chicago Hounds are what three, three, and one. None of their wins are good. <laughs> hey, a win is a win sometimes. Win's a win, baby. Uh, that looks good to me. Yeah. That works. Um, I have two IFL games, Kyle. So however uh, many you have. Whoever, we'll just two. say, I okay. Then that. Wait, you you, you have one making fun of uh, one of mine, right? Do you have Tulsa? I don't think so. No, the I names. Have to uh, do you, who played the Pirates? I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jackson no, you did. can go first, Nate. Okay. <laughs> but I figured if you, I, I should have realized if you had them, you would have put the memes in. Oh, if I uh, had it, I did not. I would have been so in. toxic. I, I, I would have been so toxic. All right, my first game. Frisco took care of business on the road in Tulsa. You took their uh, hockey was... team's logo, not the football team's logo, by the way. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's the, fa it's the, the same ownership group. Was, they play in the same stadium. It's 12 the... o'clock last night putting that together, so cut me slack. <laughs> no. Not... So, uh, you know what? Fine, just... Just to say, screw you guys. <laughs> Do it right now. <laughs> Just to stop crying about it. Nah, I'm good. I'll keep crying. Keep crying. Tulsa Oilers football, third one. Good lord. You, the hockey really? puck wasn't a giveaway, Nate? 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Puck? Yeah, the hockey That's puck hockey. is the O. Oh. <laughs> what did I do for you guys? <laughs> nah, you just got shamed into it. <laughs> to be fair, they did have a whole bunch of fans show up. That game had like 13,000 <sighs> people. There we go. Whatever. So, Frisco is taking on the football team, Tulsa Oilers. Is that better? Yes. Final <laughs> score. Better than the hockey team. Uh, I don't debatable. know if the hockey team's any good. Probably not. It's hockey in Oklahoma. Um, <laughs> I don't know. The last cool. few Stanley Cup finals does good been, enough to uh, be able to also teams. afford an indoor football team. True. <laughs> but final score was sixty to thirty-two. Uh, Frisco um, walked all over Tulsa minus the third quarter, but even then. Uh, the game was already put in hand. They were up like 41 to 10 or something at half. So um, Tulsa and Frisco kind of took their foot off the gas towards the end there. So, um, <clears throat> But Frisco had more first downs. Uh, they did have more penalties, but for less penalty yards. So I'm assuming just more false starts. And then Tulsa was uh, trying to cheat. So uh, classic. Um, maybe that's why I put the hockey logo if they didn't, uh, you know. So, uh, Frisco had all, well over 100 yard, more yards than Tulsa. Um, and since how much time I just spent on that dumb logo thing, we'll just best rusher, uh, had 11 carries, 78 yards. 
Russ receiver had six catches, 82 yards. Um, TJ Edwards did his thing per usual. Um, who in the world is this? What's up? Um, oh, Hi. hey, Pat. We are in the middle of our um, episode, so, so welcome. Welcome, Pat. This is the owner of the Pat message. Welcome, Pat. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up, what's up? Yeah. Just okay. like saying... Um, I'm actually off work tomorrow and good. So, you can you can say hi to yourself in the comments now. Nice. You could say <laughs> first. Right. You could say first guest, first in the comment section. All sorts of records here. Yep. All right. But to your second like match finally up. figuring out how to play defense. They did <laughs> forgot how to play defense. Um, got their first one of the year. Final score sixty to thirty six. Um, ha- again, started off quick in the first half, um, and ran away with this game pretty quickly. Uh, had the same amount of penalties, just three less yards. So W. They had several more first downs. They had more passing yards. Uh, a little bit less on the rushing side, but it was relatively close for the most part. They outgained two um, by 30 yards. Sam Castanova was 14 for 19, 142 yards, seven total passing touchdowns. So he was very efficient. Uh, yeah, very efficient and very trigger happy. Um, pretty fitting for their team name. So uh, Sling of the Rock. Uh, nine rushes for 30 yards and ran in one as well. So the best rusher was for San Antonio, Torrance Gibson, 17 rushes. Actually, no, I think that was for Tucson, sorry. Um, 80 yards and three touchdowns. His longest carry was for 11 yards. And DJ Myers uh, had six receptions, 75 yards, two tutties, and had a 40-yard touchdown, as noted as my key play of the game. Uh, <clears throat> to help San Antonio go up multiple scores in the first quarter. Um, and the key differentiator was um, – most stats were relatively close for the most part, so I just noted uh, San Antonio had 10 more minutes of time possession. So San Antonio gets to fall to 1-4 and four against my Frisco Fighters next week. So, um, that, like I said, you know, my teams are either first or last. No in between, baby. Yep. All right. So, front current. All right. I'm up. Oh, yeah. Kyle's up. I forgot. I was up. All right. So, this first game is, uh, you know... Uh, we had the Vegas Nighthawks against the Jacksonville Sharks. So 4-0 team versus 0-4. Uh, Vegas Nighthawks won. Uh, so similar to the uh, Memphis Showboats game, um, Jacksonville uh, just had no offense uh, in comparison. Oh, no, wait, this is the wrong game. This is the wrong game. I'm thinking uh, thinking a different one. My bad. Uh, this game, Sorry. This one, the stats exactly were actually not very good. Close. <laughs> yeah, still not that very good, but it was it was a lot closer. They just didn't get as close to the end zone. Um, uh, you would think it would have been a closer game, uh, just looking at the stats for this one. Um, the only major difference is that interception on the stats alone. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it looked like it would have been a, a pretty close game, other than you know almost. 500 on pass completions for uh, Jacksonville. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we have uh, the Northern Arizona Wranglers uh, took on the Duke City Gladiators. Uh, so another winless team that uh, the Arizona Wranglers were playing, but they uh, they improved to three and one. This game, uh, Duke City uh, played similar to the Memphis Showboats, where uh, they had a combined just over 100 yards of offense. Uh, they had... Yeah, it's impressive. I'm, I'm surprised they scored 23 points. 23 in points in IFL is really bad. Yeah. Yes. That's that is really bad. Really bad. Uh, three combined interceptions. Um three touchdowns, uh, and then they went for a 60-yard field goal. Duke yep. Duke City went for a 60-yard field goal in the first, uh, and, you know, the they were... Tar- uh, well, because those are essentially yeah. punts, because you're not going to go for it when yeah. you're inside your own end zone. Yeah, yeah. Like and then, is. yeah. They, then they decided sure. to go for a 61 in the fourth. 
So, yeah. I mean, they, they, they looks like they were doing literally went fun. nowhere. Yep, yep. <laughs> for a drive that literally went nowhere. Uh, another impressive feat is uh, Joshua Jones had a 41 yard pass, a 41 yard uh, pass as his long. So that is quite an impressive throw, given how big the field is. Yeah, so much on the field. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll sum up my game. That's... 61 yards is insane. Yeah, I mean, they're kicking out of the back of their own end zone about as long as you can kick it. Jake Bates would have hit it. Jake Bates would have hit it, no. I think Jake Bates would have had a chance, you know, even with this getting goal post, because his kicks were going right yeah. down the middle. The IFL. So, we had a good game here. The Massachusetts Pirates at the Quad City Steam Wheelers. Blop, blop. Yeah, it was the undefeated Massachusetts Pirates, by the way, coming to Moline and getting beat. Uh, they were shot out in the first quarter, and that kind of uh, set the tone for the game. Despite the fact Massachusetts did have more first downs, uh, Quad City really bum, bum. Gets, their, <laughs> gets their bread bum, and butter bum, 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 bum. in Got the uh, running game. So. It gave them about by 40 yards on the ground. They were outthrown, but uh, Quad City's really more of a running team and control the momentum that way. Also, uh, Massachusetts had a whole bunch of penalty yards. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, because freaking Frisco had 10 penalties. They had more penalties, but 40 less yards. That's insane. I think I, they just unless I put that wrong. Maybe I, maybe they just at commit that, maybe I could have done that wrong. It could have been, yeah, pat to pat or something. Like every, literally every penalty. Well, if you do it like twice on deep balls, you probably get that of like 80 yards yeah. or something too. Uh, both teams kicked the field goal, but they weren't very long. Uh, uh, Quad City also hit all their PATs. That's a big, uh, it's a big thing to do in the indoor league is make all your PATs. Uh, I gave yeah. Alejandro Benefield the uh, player of the game for the Pirates because he was 14-23, uh, 147, 2-1. He also had three rushing touchdowns. And then for the Quad Cities, I gave it to the running back, Ed Vader, who had uh, 92 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. He also had to catch. Uh, my next game was a loss, but nobody had the Rattlers, so I had to cover it. Uh, what, what I got from this game is that I think the Rattlers might not be good. <laughs> Without Sneed. Yeah. Uh, we, Sneed, yeah. We all picked the Rattlers, right? Yes, we all picked the Rattlers because okay, Iowa's not well, good. But uh, I'm glad it became a win for us, but a two-point yeah. game is way too close for indoor. That's what, that's literally what I was going to yeah. say. I I almost did a conditional pick on this game, too, where with the whole Sneed thing because yeah, I, I was know. debating I don't know how Iowa bad Hurt week. is, but he's been out for forever. He's, he's been, been out since the start back. of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Arizona, the big, big difference here, once again, hitting all your PATs, <laughs> really helps out. Uh, yeah, Kyle King also less than 50% passing by at the killer, You're not too. anything? Oh my gosh. <laughs> no uh, picks! Yeah, no picks, but less than 50%, so that, that's the drive killer. Uh, and then my Jacksonville Sharks lost, so no coverage from there. Here's scores from around the league that none of us covered. Probably the best game of the week, the undefeated San Diego Strike Force played the undefeated uh, Bay Area Panthers, and it was a three-point win for the Panthers. That probably best game out of Wait, any did, game did we've we covered so we far. We all took the Panthers, right? Yeah. I took the Strike Force. Ah, oh, okay. Good. You, you and I uh, took them, though, girl. Yeah. Oh, I did pretty well. Hey, look, look what I said. I, I decided to start following Kyle, and... Uh, and notice the trend. Yeah. Benefited me this week. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> You're Remember welcome. what you said you tanked this week? Nah, you only tanked me one. Yeah. And even then, that game was... Shouldn't have happened that way, but... The Gunslingers... I guess out. tanked two. Yeah. The Pirates one should have been a win, theoretically. Gunslingers, yeah. I've always had faith in if they could ever figure out defense and they finally did figure out defense because they could always put up 60 points. Yeah, they, they are scoring a crap ton. I think you can put faith in them in that again. Yeah. But we'll see. Except for they play Frisco, so. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't. I'm anyway. surprised. So not this how much they their defense actually showing up. Yeah, they're they the 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 Tucson quarterback with like five of fifteen or something. With like Man, Tucson's picks. not they're not not good, but the fact what quarterback had been playing like against San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so here are the standings. You got the fighters at the top and then the Panthers at the top. Ooh, pa- Panther and the Nighthawks, both. Nighthawks are now favorited in the uh, West uh, with the SRS. Yeah. Well, the fighters and the, those three are all really close. To, to be fair, to be fair, we, we really haven't close. played like anyone, I don't think. Uh, That's not true. I thought you played the... Week one, oh, okay, we might have played... You upset one. somebody week one. Uh, I, I picked against that, feels... Vegas the first two weeks. I'm pretty mm. sure. So you beat two teams that you probably shouldn't have beaten at the time of what we knew. Yeah, because sure. I don't think Vegas was really good last year. <laughs> wow, the SRS really doesn't like the Pirates. Look, look really at this, baby. But it really likes the Rattlers. For the first to last, the fact, my the fact team, they're two baby. and three and must have a positive SRS. Yeah. Meat riding, the glazing. <laughs> they're hating on my teams, though. Yeah, they have a higher SRS than the three and one Wrangler. They have a higher SRS than the three and one Blizzard. That and that's impressive. probably valid, to be fair. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe not higher than the Pirates. That's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. Anyways, here's the... Well, I think the what hurt the Pirates is they lost the Steam Wars. That's true. That's what uh, that's what killed their SRS, I think. I don't think their SRS was that great to begin with. Anyways, here's the league leaders. Castronova over here with 20-1. and one. Jerome Wait, Johnson. Yeah, one and three. Uh, yeah. 30% I, I less literally... pass attempts. But almost the same amount of yards. Wow. Uh, as, yeah. uh, that's impressive. Yeah. And then uh, TJ Edwards is 14 rushing touchdowns. Damn. He's too good that's, in the regular season. That's what he does. That is your Dak Prescott. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, he's not really a passing boy. Pattern. He's a runny boy. boy. He doesn't share. <laughs> no, it's just the way they run their offense. Yeah. Oh, it looks like Iowa has one receiver. Yeah. Somebody to throw to. And we have our pick of Blizzard. Um, Blizzard. Actually, you know what? Kyle, I'll let you take this one. You know, I'll, I'll go Blizzard. Yeah, I'll yeah give me Green Blizzard. Bay. Uh, right, Frisco. Give me Frisco. Yeah, give me Frisco. Uh, I'm going Nighthawks. Nighthawks. Yeah, give me the Nighthawks. Pirates. Oh, yeah, Pirates are going to bounce back. Yeah. Uh, it seems pretty Ooh. consensus so far. Um, Wranglers. Should... Give me Wranglers for this one. Okay, I'm going to go back and look at the FRA 3 quick. I, yeah, thank you. I thought Wranglers were better. 2.9 versus, uh, yeah, negative, negative 10.8, yeah, I thought Wranglers. I'll go with Kyle. Wranglers. Oilers. I'm going to go Steam Wheelers. Yeah, give me Steam Wheelers. Yeah, I'm going to go my home, my home team. Uh, I'm going to take Rattlers. Uh, sharks are not good. Yeah. I'll go Rattlers. Yeah, we should have consensus pick here. Are they Wait, playing they each, other each other again? Two weeks in a row? Yeah, but it's flipped. Yeah, it's brutal. I'll go Strike Force. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with give me, strike give me Panthers still. Give me Panthers. Right, I'm going to stick with the Panthers. It is close. It's, it is very close. It's yeah. probably going to go Strike Force. That's okay. wacky scheduling. To be fair, yeah, they yeah. didn't know they were both going to be good. You're not wrong. <laughs> I feel like the Strike Force probably did know. I think they did get a lot better after they got traded for the, Nate Davis. The second they got Nate Davis, things turned around. Yeah. And they did put money into that because they got a new field and everything this year. But their field is so yeah. pretty. Unlike some of the teams in the AFL, as we will see. <laughs> All, All right. right uh... 
kick Massachusetts out of S tier, but they're yeah, A tier. Yeah, Kick San Diego I, out of S tier. San Diego at top of A. San Diego's, yeah, ahead of Mass. Top of A. Uh, um, you put Quasi the head of the Rattlers right now. <laughs> you can move San Antonio out of F now. You will probably put them ahead of those three teams in D. I feel like but, that's a little they beat early. Tucson. Yeah, they I would say right about there. They have a better offense than Tulsa. I I'm confident. They have a better they offense than yeah. all these teams. Yeah, but they have, uh, they have a better offense Tulsa's, than your baby. Tulsa's mid. I I would put them ahead of Tulsa right now. Okay, you know okay. it's the bottom of the barrel, so it's okay. It's the yeah. bottom of the barrel anyway. They're shifted around. I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that for now. I think for, as... for me is Tulsa, San Antonio can figure things out and move up. Those other two teams. Oh yeah, fair. If they do move up, it's going to be up to C tier. San Antonio could, on paper, <laughs> talent wise, should be anywhere from B to A tier. Yeah. Yeah, their their ceiling that's, is that's high because it's here. all the yeah their ceiling's high they're, because, because they're a lot of empire much, on their much, much higher ceiling, better quarterback. They just they have, have to coach. figure out how to play. They defense. just need to play defense. Good yeah. coach. Whereas the other two teams, they don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. How many other teams have players that got locked out of their hotel room by Antonio Brown? I didn't <laughs> think so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you guys get it. On to the NAL. I have nothing oh. uh, for okay. this one and I'll, the next I'll, one. I'll go. All right. All right. Uh, I have the correct logos this time for sure. Yep. The uh, Idaho Horsemen uh, versus the Omaha Beef. Um, Idaho, once again, did not have their key players um, because, you know, I guess they just have jobs um, and refuse to travel. Um to their credit, it would have been a really long drive, so um, not as long as uh, Carolina, but still uh, a good day, at least uh, out of their time. But Omaha was actually down after the first six to nothing, and I turned the game off, um, but I'm glad. Uh, I kind of wish they didn't because the uh, rest of the game was all Omaha. They put up two 28 to zero quarters in the second and fourth, respectively, winning this game 63 to 14. Omaha outgained Idaho by quite a few yards, 271 to 214. Idaho did have more passing yards, but Omaha outrushed Idaho like crazy. Um, I guess once again, when you fall that far behind, you can't really run the ball. Um, I also suspect Idaho just doesn't have a strong run game to begin with, but not totally certain on that. I think the league um, Idaho didn't really run, so. Yeah. Um, it, it would make sense. Um the Tommy Armstrong, 9 for 14, 111 yards, and a touchdown pass. Ran 10, 10 carries, 74 yards, and five touchdowns through the ground. So he had a really good week. Uh, longest carry was 26 yards. And then Idaho's leading receiver was Kyle, Kyler Henson, five catches, 34 yards, two touchdowns. Um, the two touchdowns really put him ahead of every other receiver. Um, nobody really had that many more receiving yards than anyone else. So uh, a lot of... Uh, sharing of the ball in this game and uh, the passing game did, in this game. Uh, Omaha did throw a pick, but uh, Idaho had three. It did not clarify if the fumbles were turnovers or not. So that's why I'm putting three plus. They did fumble it three times. I don't know if Omaha recovered any of them or not, um, but they did throw three interceptions. So okay. uh, the key differentiator of this game was obviously the beeps one deuce. Uh, that, that was a, a key factor in winning this game. Without it, I, it would have been uh, a much closer game. Um, and incredibly, based on the beefs part, <laughs> Tommy uh, decided to run it in with one second left of the game to score a touchdown to pad his stats wow. to win 63-14. to Yeah, that's um, pretty base. But still so, not as good of a win as Carolina's beat down of them. <laughs> No, and not not as good as a win, but that is uh, what the Saints did, but way worse. That that's just that's just mean. Um, <laughs> at least when the Saints did it, there was time on the clock. This is literally ending the game on a touchdown. <laughs> that's freaking wild. Um, and then it's Omaha is, to my understanding, off again. So it just feels like they're playing like every four weeks. So happens when uh, you lose teams or the season starts. 
Also true. Yep. Alright. And Kyle had no yeah. games, right? Uh, yep. I had a bye week and, and a loss. loss. Yep. Alright. The NAL. So my Idaho mm-hmm. Orthman lost. Womp womp. Maybe one day the players will play. <laughs> but the uh, big surprise of the week. Womp! Womp womp! Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> With the uh, Colorado Spartans beating the Carolina Cobras. So I'm sure the Carolina Cobras are starting to stack papers where that trophy was supposed to be. <laughs> Uh, see, the, it's once again, uh, key differentiator here thing is, uh, when your quarterback throws less, less than 50%, that really, uh, kills your drives. <clears throat> so. I mean, Colorado did the same thing, so. Yeah, but not nearly as bad. Uh, fair. Fair. <laughs> 19 to 45. Yeah, 19 from 45 is foul. Yeah, that's brutal. brutal. That's insane. At least half their touch, half their completions were almost, almost half their completions were touchdowns at least. For, uh, for also, Colorado. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. That's impressive. Uh, gonna throw it. If you're going to catch it, catch it in the end zone. Yeah, Yeah. teams were good on the <coughs> PAT for the most part. Carolina even hit a field goal. I gave their uh, player of the game to uh, James Summers, who had uh, three of their touchdowns. He had two catches for 35 yards, two touchdowns, and then five rushes for 16 yards and touchdown. And then for Colorado, I gave theirs to... Uh, Steven Newbold, who had five catches for 87 yards, three touchdowns, and also three returns for 87 yards and a uh, touchdown. So, yeah. So, here is how we did on the pick'em. Down to two losses. Yeah. I was so close to... I should think Colorado, but... It was a hard one. It was a hard one. But not, not anymore. I believed in my Spartans. I should have believed with you. Oh, yeah. So here's how the uh, standings look. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully the Flying Aces get to play some games soon. Oh, they won't. <laughs> this is all over the place. Yeah. I want to see Vs and the Bandits play now, you know? Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so here's how the league leaders stand, stand right now. There's really only two teams that really throw the ball. (laughs) That's impressive. (laughs) Yeah, with Armstrong at at, at third. I don't know who this Tommy Armstrong is, but... uh, Yeah, look at this. He must be a running running back or something. He's leading the league in rushing. Yeah, Tommy Armstrong is also leading in scoring, but Tommy Armstrong is... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, hey, I I made a way worse mistake, so. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, Stephen Newbold's leading league. In Colorado with the top two receivers. It just shows how much they pass. Explains why they're able to compete, I guess. Yeah. Yep. The Gunslingers would be killing it in this league if they stayed. <laughs> oh my gosh, they'd be slaughtering teams and then lose to the beef. <laughs> probably at this point, probably would beat the beef, to be yeah. honest. All right, and here is the pick. Um, we get banded to Cobra, so that could be a fun game. And uh, uh, so I'll, I'll rock with the I, horsemen. I'm hoping the horsemen, uh, since they're at home, while their players show up. Oh, if they're at home, yeah, give me the horsemen. I have no expectations for the flying aces because I've only seen them twice and they've lost both. God, games. I have no idea because I don't know if the bandits. And it's been like a month and a half not. since they played. I'm gonna rock with the Cobras at home. I, I think the bandits are pretty decent, but I, I think what are the uh, bandits right now? Three now. They're three now. I I think. But I think they played I the flying eighth twice. They they oh, they've yeah, already, yeah, yeah. Well, Give me they also beat uh, Colorado. But we'll see. I mean, Cobras also beat Colorado, didn't they? And then lost to them. Didn't they swap? Yeah, them? yeah, they split. But, I'm gonna go bandits. Are you going Cobras, Kyle? Yeah, give me Cobras. You know what? If Jackson believes in my team, so will I. All right. I, I'm sticking. I, you're probably going to be right this time. Right, uh, the now, yeah. Their, yep. um, and then Spartans uh, go up. Yeah. Up for, for them. 
Yeah, I'm fine with that. Put Spartans a Ooh, no, that that's a that's a circle of suck right there. Yeah. Uh yeah, I'm fine with that. That works. Yeah. The Colorado tier between the Idaho tier right now. That's yeah, valid. it's fine. Yep. That's valid. We have no idea. We should have an Idaho at home versus an Idaho on the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just preemptively name F tier Idaho on the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I think that <clears throat> that's what we're trying to go for with these. There we go. I like it. All right. Uh... Team, pre team previews. Yep, AFL team previews. Who wants to go first? Uh, Kyle, you actually have. Uh, I have stuff, so I'll go last. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, let me get... Technically, I do have stuff for one team too, but yeah, I mean that's fair. I have stuff. All for right, two. this is the one team I do have. Um. <laughs> The line well, I should say I have stuff for all three teams, but I only have one. Because they at least all existed. Yes, and they all existed. So the Selena Liberty, 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 Liberty. Um, Cringe. Founded in 2012 as the Bombers, and uh, became the Liberty in 2016. They do have one championship ring back in 2022. Five playoff appearances. Um, pretty much, honestly, from 2018 onward. Uh, minus COVID, where they didn't play. Uh, but if COVID didn't happen, they probably would have made the playoffs that year as well. So um, they've been they've been kind of steamrolling and uh, chunking the playoffs. Pretty standard for some of my teams, but um, uh, overall, a, a pretty decent team. Uh, went eight and two last year in the SIF. Four hundred seventy four points scored and a lot three hundred eighty eight. So a decent plus minus a plus eighty six. Best win was against the Tropics. They weren't very good, but they did put up 75 on them. So that was pretty a uh, key uh, takeaway for me. Um, and their worst loss. Um, they didn't really have a bad loss, to be honest. Could probably argue their championship game loss was worse. But my logic was the beef run defeated. So um, figured the Sioux City Bandits one was a tiny bit worse. Um and even then, it was a six-point loss. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, playoff loss, um, uh, fifty to thirty uh, to the Omaha Beef. So, um, for the most part, uh, that was pretty much the closest game the Beef had last year. So, um, kudos to Selena for trying. Um, NFL equivalent uh, are the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, head coach is Haran O'Neill. And the random fact, I didn't really have anything other than their jerseys are dope. So and their logo's sick. Um, what the heck is yeah, free healthcare? I think, right? I think Colorado uh, plays on their old field too. I'm pretty sure that's the logo that's under their logo. Yeah. <laughs> in the AI, in the uh, NAL. Love it. And here's a look at the roster of what they had posted on their site. I assumed it was accurate, so I hope it is. Um, if not, uh, womp womp. I tried. Um, but it is what it is. So hopefully, um, Arena Fan will have everything after this week. I do. It, they do have a fullback, Bobby McBride. So yeah, Arena Football uh, fullback. Their fullback bring, linebacker. Bring in, oh, I guess they have two uh, Kellogg. So yeah, they generally play linebacker too or defensive end because uh, so Arena Football has Ironman rules. Cool. Interesting. Um, so most so, wide receivers are also playing defensive back and vice versa. Most overall, reliable. yeah. Overall, I'm not familiar with a lot of these guys, but uh, just considering their track record and the some of the the question of uh, the stability of some of the other teams in this league, I suspect Selena should finish at the top or very close to it. So um, that's why I took them number one overall, assuming they're going to be a top team in this league if it uh, survives. Yeah. Next team was uh, the Rock City Marshals, founded in 2021. No championships, skill issue. No playoff appearances, massive skill issue. 0-10 uh, last year. Uh, it was not a great year. Uh, they fit the narrative of my teams. Uh, if you're not in first place, you're in last place. Um, 
And that's what attracted me to them. Um, in all seriousness, I forgot they were on 10 last year. Scored 222 points, which is really bad. Uh, <coughs> and allowed 547 with a historic negative 325 plus minus. Uh, best win, obviously none. Um, maybe you could say their uh, end of the season was their best win. So worst loss was uh, 28 to 77 to the Gillette Mustangs. Uh, on the road. It was a really ugly game. I think I remember watching part of that, laughing, thinking, what's up? Uh, do they have a best loss from last season? <laughs> I thought about putting that under best win. I'm not going to lie <laughs> to you. I really thought about it. Um, I, I wish I did it now. Um, if I had the site up, I'd totally, I'd totally pull it up. But um, I think their closest loss was like, 15 20 points i don't think that is they could have played topeka close Matt, they, they might have had a, to, a close game of topeka um remember so uh playoff result and slash a uh nfl equivalent uh 2017 cleveland browns um sean king is their head coach <laughs> and random fact is a no wins in their franchise history so um they're really bad so uh I take a look at their roster we don't know um uh, and uh you know, like the Mississippi Raiders field, um, they could collapse and fall apart and fold. So, and last but not least are the buildings up. <coughs> the new version was founded in 2022. Uh, no championships under this current team. They do have a couple uh, in their previous lifetime. Uh, I think they won two or three, something like that. Yeah, three towards the bottom. A uh, couple playoff appearances though when they were founded. So uh, six and four last year. Um, in the SIF, uh, 401 points for 365 points against, uh, plus minus a plus 36. Um, so Gillette has become a very common trend with my teams. Uh, the best win for that loss is uh, 41 to 38 <laughs> versus Gillette. Uh, but their worst loss on the road, once again, I actually think that's that's disturbingly close to this score. Uh, four point difference, 28 to 73. Gillette likes playing at home, man. Um, as a, and, and Billings is certainly far better than Rapid City, so that was a really bad game for them. G- Gillette uh, played like a weird stadium too. It was like it was like a convention it, center kind of thing, like a, like, a, um, like a like a Y almost kind of thing. I, I remember thinking it was similar to a YMC kind of situation. It was goofy. Um, I did they fold? I go uh, really- yeah, because their owner owned two teams. I think he might have owned okay. Billings. But all okay. I know is that when they made the move to the AFL, they just closed down Gillette but took their head coach to the other team. That's funny. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't think it was them then because Cedric Walker was their coach previously. Okay, then, um, um, let me see if I can... But I don't know. Okay. I could be mistaken about that. Uh, while you look that up, uh, playoff result, uh, no surprise, this is not really a bad loss. The beef were just that much better than everyone else, 42-6. to six. Minus Selena. And even then, Selena lost by 20. So, uh, the Billings Outlaws NFL equivalent are the Colts. Uh, did some winning, to mean? moved overnight, and then got a team again. So, um, <laughs> I see what you mean. Um, they didn't fold overnight, obviously, but I thought it was uh, similar colors and just a funny little joke. So, head coach is Cedric Walker. And like I mentioned, for the random fact, they did win. Yeah, yeah. Three championships. Cedric Walker is the guy who was at Wyoming last year. Oh, so he was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, then I stand corrected. And then the roster. Um, I do think Billings will actually survive. I was a little surprised to see they didn't have a roster posted, um, considering they're relatively decent last year. So, um, so those are my team. All right. Team. So you want me to go before you, Kyle? Do are you? Are you? Oh uh, no, I could just go now. Okay. All right. Uh, let me get stuff pulled up. Oh wow, we have guest special guest Trent Richardson. <laughs> got really dark. All right. like it's uh, so my water. first team, we've got the Southwest Kansas Storm. Uh, they're located in Dodge City, Kansas. Uh, head coach Gary Thomas. Uh, he seems to be a head coach in the local area. Uh, they were founded in 2022, uh, formerly a member of the Champions Indoor Football Conference. Uh, their most notable matchup is uh, a 27-21 to loss in the first round of the playoffs in the CIF. 
uh, to the Omaha Beef. Uh, Close game. They're, they went 5-5 five and five that first season, and then, uh, what was it, like 2-7, and seven, uh, or sorry, 3-7 and seven on Eesh. the 23 season. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, So they right. have a franchise record of 8-12 and 12 over two seasons. Uh, notable players, uh, Jonah Morris, wide receiver uh, from Illinois, and Michael Lawson, defensive back from Western Illinois. Um, next up, we have the West Texas Desert Hawks, formerly known as the West Texas Warbirds from 2019 to 2023. Uh, they were also founded in tw- uh, 2019. Uh, they're located in Odessa, Texas. Uh, head coach is Chris Siegfried. Uh, he is uh, 90 and 59 all time as a head coach. He's also the former NAL director of football operations and uh, NAL commissioner, uh, spanning his tenure in the NAL conference from 2016 to 2023. Uh, the Desert Hawks were founded in uh, 2019 and formerly a member of the Champions Indoor Football Conference. Uh, they've uh, Prior to uh, joining this conference, uh, they in 2021 they won the Lone Star Series with the notable matchup being uh, they beat the Amarillo uh, Venom 79 to 60 to win the LSS Championship that year. Uh, notable players: Anthony Davis, wide receiver. Uh, and then last up, we have the Nashville Cats. This is the third in car. Uh, incarnation of the nashville cats uh they're located in nashville tennessee uh or at least that's what they said i don't think they actually Um, play in nashville yeah that's what i that's what i'm saying they don't actually they probably don't actually play but i couldn't find an actual site um their head coach they'll make like two home game scheduled or something yeah it's like Uh, head coach (laughs) head coach is dean uh kokinos uh and his head coaching record is 82 and 92 uh, they were originally founded in 1997, then 2005, and now uh, this year. And they were a former member of the original AFL twice uh, in both of those uh, incarnations. Uh, when they rejoined in 2005, uh, they won the first AFL championship <laughs> game, because uh, prior to 2005, they didn't have a championship game to decide the winner of the, of, uh, the conference. It just went off of regular season. I'm pretty record. sure they had arena both before that. Uh, that's what it said on the website. It said it was the first one. Maybe it was their first one. Uh, I can double check it, but I, I, yeah, I looked arena at... Arena Bowl okay. 1, 1987. Arena Bowl 2, right, 1988. Right. Arena Bowl 3, 1989. I'll look it up in a second, but that's what Wikipedia said. So, you know, Kyle, we need a tag that. team and... Here's the Arena Bowl. Arena Bowl. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll look at it in a little bit. But, uh, we all made mistakes. Team. We get it. Braxton, we all screwed uh, up from, tonight. Uh, yep. Jackson's being far less Illinois embarrassing. State. Tommy Armstrong, Jr. I love Tommy Armstrong. All right. Uh, on to mine. All right. From current slide. The AFL. So, uh... For my first team, I have the Iowa Rampage. Um, they don't have the roster listed. The only notable player I know they signed, apparently, is Rakeem Cato. Here's him playing oh. for the West Virginia Rough Riders. What, Kyle? It, it was a conference championship, not the, a league championship. Okay, they won the first conference championship. Yep. Okay. Wait, so Rakeem Cato, he played at Marshall. He played in the CFL. He played in a lot of different indoor leagues. I think he played for... Orlando last year in the NAL and Fayetteville. Um, Iowa Rampage, uh, they play Iowa. They're across the river from Omaha, so they're going to be compete directly with the Omaha Beef, so I don't think it's going to last very long. Here's a picture from their uh, preseason game, and you can see their field is not particularly in the best shape. If you look uh, right next to the 25s, you can see the seams in the grass. I can see it on the 15 to 10 yeah, as well. Yeah, the 15 as Giving well. off Mississippi Raiders vibes. Yeah, so... Someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. Anyway, their head coach is uh, Tyrus Jackson. I uh, saw that immediately. <laughs> yeah, oh he won 19 all-time because he was the Topeka oh. Tropics head coach. 
the last two How years. How did he get another job? So, yeah, nice. not great. Uh, my other team, I have the Orlando Predators. I take that back really quick. That's the 2017 Cleveland Browns NFL equivalent. <laughs> That's a big traffic. Only because their head coach is the living embodiment of Hugh Jackson. Oh, yeah, Hugh Jackson. <laughs> Yeah, he went, went he went he went both if he went 0 and 10 and then 1 and 1 and 9. Uh, so, anyway, uh, Orlando Predators. Uh this is a new incarnation. There's the previous one. Uh this one was found in 2019. They're 13 and 33 all time. In 2023, they're 4 and 8 and had a semifinal loss to the Jacksonville Sharks because uh it, it, almost everybody made the playoffs. That's why <laughs> they have a semifinal loss. With the um, indoor football in Orlando, the original Orlando Predators from played from 91 to 2016. They won two Arena Bowls, and the new Predators came around in 2019 in the NAL. Their head coach is uh, EJ Burt. Uh, I don't see any coaching experience for him on his Wikipedia page, so uh, here's just a bunch of things that he did playing. He played a lot of indoor football. Uh, oh, he played for the Predators. He's yeah, a former Predator. Yeah, he, played, he is a former Predator. Hey, excuse me? <laughs> yeah. He's a what, Kyle? <laughs> yeah, so he was an all rookie in the in the, in the uh, Arena Football League. He was all second team Arena. <clears throat> Played for the Chicago Rush. So, nice. Yeah. Uh, here's their whole listed roster on the website. I know it's out of date because Matt Elam plays for the Massachusetts Pirates. Um. Uh, key thing though, if this is Dave accurate, is Drew Powell the for- formal two-time uh, IFL MVP? Two. And then Ed Crouch, I think, was Fan Control Football League uh, MVP, or at least the championship game MVP, because he played for the Wild Aces, which was my team in that. Nice. They might actually win games. Yeah. So. But I don't know how consistent they had. Willie Henry, former. Uh, uh, Last chance you person, but he signed with Edmonton in the CFL, so that's where he is now. Elks go, but, baby. Yep. <laughs> we'll uh, see. Well, we'll see how accurate the thrust comes out when they uh, start playing games. You know. So, looking forward to Arena fan having the proper stuff. Uh, next team I have is the Albany Firebirds. Um, this is a new incarnation. Um, it's actually the third team called the Firebirds in Albany. So, much like Kyle. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, the indoor football in Albany. The original Firebirds played in Albany from 1990 to 2000 before moving to Indiana, where it's going to be Indiana Firebirds, and were uh, replaced by the AF2's uh, Albany Conquest in 2002, which lasted until 2009, and in 2009 they switched their name to the Firebirds for that last year. And then uh, the <clears throat> Albany would get another arena football team in 2018 when the Albany Empire came there, uh, and then they would win the final Arena Bowl in 2019, but I guess it won't be the final anymore if this league makes it to the Arena Bowl. Uh, and then the Empire name would return in 2021 when the NAL would bring it back, and they would win back-to-back championships prior to Antonio Brown's ownership and implosion of the team. So, yeah. Uh, their head coach is Damon Ware. Uh, he's been around in the indoor leagues. Uh, in 2018, he was the Cedar Rapids offensive coordinator. In 2019, he was Nebraska Dangers offensive coordinator. In the 2020, he would have been the Beast coordinator, but that season got canceled. And then 21 and 22, he was the Al- well, 21, 22, and 23, he was the Albany uh, Empire offensive coordinator. And then it became their interim head coach when uh, Antonio Brown fired uh, uh, Tom Manass, the first one. And then he also got fired by Antonio Brown. Gosh. <laughs> so, yeah. What a mess. <laughs> yep. Here's the the quarterback room. I don't recognize any of these people's names. So, uh, here is their wide receiver room. I do re- recognize Darius Prince and Ferry and Tony. Those are both players that played for the Empire. Here's their offensive line and defensive linemen. Here are their defensive backs and linebackers, and uh, as well as some of the ones that also play fullback. And uh, he's a fullback defensive end and their kicker. Um, here are the teams that none of us have. So we have the Orlando uh, Black Bear, no, not the Orlando, Oregon Black Bears, uh, the Georgia Forest, the Minnesota Myth, the uh, Wichita Regulators, the Philadelphia Souls, Louisiana Voodoo, who got kicked out of the first stadium. So they're playing in a second stadium, which I think is like a uh, like a rodeo barn. 
<laughs> folding real quick. I, yeah. I'm I'm gonna be honest. The regulators logo just doesn't fit the name regulators. Because it's a dead skeleton. Yeah, it, they should be outlaws it's or still, it's Yeah, that a, gives me more outlaw vibes. It's yeah. still a sick logo though. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a sick logo, but the These name like, takes away. Logos, man. And then you have the uh, a Washington Wolf pack. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the uh, Oregon Black Bears, who's a uh, preseason game last week, has no rebounding nets, and Dasher board is made out of rodeo uh, walls. How in the world are they going to <laughs> And they have a home game this week, so. All right, who Let's folds go. first? What Oregon? I will say is at least their grass looks pretty. I don't see any themes. Yeah, are, are we taking bets on what team... Who's, who's holding first, <laughs> Iowa, Oregon, or the Voodoo? I actually think the Voodoo might pull it off. If you're not paying your rent, that's... I'm thinking Iowa. I'm thinking Iowa. It's going to be really cool. Iowa competing yeah. directly with Omaha is so stupid. Yeah, yeah. not bright. That hard. But if you're not paying your rent, that's pretty stupid. Yeah. It's like not paying your uh, franchise. It's like, just like being an NHL <laughs> owner or something. Here the the how the divisions are split up, and uh, we have the pick em for the week. So, <laughs> so guess and check. Got it. Uh, give me Saul. <laughs> You're gonna go Saul. Kyle's going Saul. Uh, so so if Voodoo have to if Voodoo fold because they can't play, the win automatically goes to Soul, right? Uh, I think it just cancels. Yeah, I think we just delete it because that's what I did with Mississippi. We have precedent, and I just got rid of it. <laughs> uh, I think the voodoo got... being evicted from their house is going to give them extra motivated, mm -hmm. extra motivation. Also, the soul website is so disastrous. The, uh, the voodoos I... aren't good either, but... All right, Nate. What <laughs> the heck? Uh, I'll come back to it. All right, the ICT regulate, or I guess the Wichita regulators. They were a semi-pro team last year, by the way. The regulators. They're I'll, like a semi-pro outdoor I'll, league. I'll go outlaws. Outlaws. They are. Give me. Yeah, I'm gonna give me the outlaws. regulators. Kyle's gonna go regulators. Uh, Kyle. The regulators. Their field too. They're playing on the uh, a field uh, that used to belong to the Wichita Wild, and it still says Wild <laughs> in the middle of their field. That's wild. Yeah. And you said outlaws, right, Nate? Yep. <laughs> All right, Predators at Firebirds. Okay, the Firebirds website is a lot more put together. I'll go Firebirds. Even, actually, uh, even if the Predators... Wait, they do have Drew Powell. I'm a fan of the Predators. You guys you forgot to have Nate pick the first game. No, nah, I know. Nate said he's going to come back to it. I'm coming back to it. I'm randomizing it. I'm randomizing my pick here. Kyle's going Predators. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Predators. The Drew Powell, that could be good. He is good, and then he throws soul crushing interceptions in the playoffs. Um, considering that Drew Paul, I'll probably go with Kyle on this one, and then I'll join Jackson on Voodoo. <laughs> All right. Uh, Iowa Rampage versus the Marshall. Rampage. Oh, well, ooh. <laughs> Iowa. Just, these are both brutal. <laughs> these Can't are be both. I, I like Rakeem Kato. So if he's on the on Iowa, I'm gonna go with Iowa. But the they don't have a good catch coach. <laughs> this miss. next game, I do not know. <laughs> but the cast of your team, Kyle. Yeah, but this is gonna be so bad week one. Yeah, just give I'm, me cast. I'm going Myth. I think Myth has a former Minnesota quarterback, I think. Uh, Jackson and I, I just can't pick the same teams this week, apparently. Give me, <laughs> give me I, cats. I trust Jackson. I, to be fair, Nate, my indoor picks have been bad this year. Other than the uh, AIF. Yeah, but this is a crapshoot. This is yeah. a crapshoot right now. Uh, Wolfpack, so okay. I like the Black Bears, no rebounding nets, and... Uh, and uh, <laughs> Co you know, rodeo corral walls. I do too. I like it too. <laughs> Give me wolf pack. Uncle wolf pack. <laughs> or no, I like bikers. What? Jeez, screw Kyle you. Kyle just can't pick with me. His, his rules were. Georgia Forest versus Desert Hawks. Give me Desert Hawks. Desert Hawks existed last year, so I'm. 
Oh, you're going Desert Hawks. Liberty! Oh. oh my gosh! I made a pick by myself! <laughs> I did it, guys! Well, actually, do you want Liberty, Kyle, or do you want the... Do you want the yeah, give me Liberty. Don't be Don't be Liberty. Give me Liberty. I think the Liberty. But the Storm were the first team to actually, pick their... Actually, actually, this isn't the, the same fan. Liberty. This is not the same Liberty. Give me Storm. Liberty, 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 Liberty. I probably... They probably do have a lot of the same players as last year. Nah, nah. Based Kyle. All right, you ready to do power ranking? No. <laughs> yeah, power ranking. <laughs> no, okay. Still lean at number one, and I everybody don't have a else. team for this. Yeah. So the AIF. All right. I think. I don't either. I think I think there was only one game. Yep. All right. So let me pull up my game. I just I just saw that score. Yep. Rough. AIF. It was brutal. The Harrisburg Stampede at the Columbus Lions. Let's shout out to seventy-three to nineteen. It was a slaughter fest, but shout out to the Harrisburg defense holding Columbus to negative rushing yards. Uh, too bad they gave up 300 passing yards and 10 touchdown passing touchdowns. Good lord. <laughs> Dude threw more. Good <laughs> Dude threw, uh, hey, it, at least we had 110 yards twice, of offense. Twice as many passing touchdowns as incompletions. Um, yeah, three times as many off, uh, yards. Uh, Pretty good on PATs. I gave the Harrisburg uh, star to Keith Coffey, an athlete, who was 2 of 9 for 22 yards. A touchdown and interception, but also had uh, a rushing touchdown. And then for Columbus, I gave it to uh, Tremel Gunn, for every catch. who had 4 catches for 131 yards and 4 touchdowns. So, pretty good. Good week for him. Uh... Cedar Rapids had a bye, so here is how we sit on the uh, pick them in the AIF. Good lord. <laughs> Kyle, I forgot I could Kyle. It's impressive. <laughs> You're really you good. should be, Kyle should be in first out of all of us for all these leagues for this. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Kill, kill, seven down is kill, kill. Seven yeah. down is crazy. <laughs> so, here is, uh, here's how the standings look right now. God, Lions mad. trying to damn feed River Kig that I'm. To be fair, I convinced you to take the other team. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought it would be funny because I mean a win isn't doing me much. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Uh, shout out to the Columbus quarterback who, in three games, has more touchdowns than incompletions. <laughs> That's that is impressive. <laughs> They're running the table. Yeah. yeah. Uh. And since they're the only team that puts yards in, that's why they're they put stats in for their games. That's why they. Hey, Corpus Christi does too. Minus the fact that one of our wins is a two to nothing win. <laughs> Who scored those two points? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. God. <laughs> God scored those points. <laughs> when he smit, smited their field. <laughs> the league commissioner. And here's the pick. Um. We have another Try again. <laughs> yeah, but but you're what? home now. You're home now. Lions and Tritons and Bears. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, my teams Lions. are dog shit. Give me uh, give me <laughs> Lions and Tritons. Are you going? To uh, I'll take the small victories. <laughs> I'll, yep, Kyle, go Venom odds. Flipping the coin. Uh, I'll tell you when you're gonna call heads or tails right when I flip it. Alright. Tails. Call it. Tails. Heads. No, nope, I'm staying. The Tritons. Uh, yeah, give me Tritons. Wanted to go heads, but then Jackson said tails. I'm <laughs> sorry. That could stay the same. No, Straight Columbus up. moves up. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just put him. Yep. Yep. Uh, with how bad the Stampede's loss was, I would be willing to move him down. One. There. Yeah, feel free <laughs> to move Harrisburg down to C. I feel above Cedar Rapids, though. Yep. Triton shouldn't be that far behind, but they should definitely be a whole tier below. Yeah. A bunch of islands, yeah. The Tritons are clearly better than everyone else except Columbus. Yep. I'm just curious how close that game's going to be. Are they going to lose by 30? 
they gonna lose by sixty? I don't know. We'll find out someday. Yeah. When the teams oh, finally play. play. All right, Major League Rugby. I have one, Kyle. How many do you have? Uh, I have. You go. I have two. Okay. All right. So I had one Major League Rugby, and that was the Houston Sabercats going on the road to be Old Glory 38-17. Houston bounces back from their first loss this season. Uh, no really surprise here. Old Glory is the definition of mid. Um, Houston more tries. Uh, they both t had the same amount of penalty goal kicks. Uh, Houston normally wouldn't say tackles are a factor, but uh, – when you out-tackle a team by that much, then, then I think it definitely played into their victory. Um, the Houston had less penalties. Uh, DC also had a yellow card, so I'm sure uh, that didn't help them out either. Um, Houston had more lineups and scrums. Uh, another key factor, I mean, other than they had multiple more tries in them, Houston had 5-for-5 five five on conversions. You see it was only 1-for-1. One one. Houston's key player was AJ... Alatimu, he had 13 points, five goals kicked, and 160 kicking meters. DC's key player was Tabita N. Uh, seven points, a try, scored a try, 11 tackles, 19 balls carried, and 119 running meters. Um, it did not have a key play of the game. Um, but uh, the next game for Houston is a win against San Diego at home. So <clears throat> that was my sled. All right, uh, so uh, let me plug it. All right, there we go. I my first game was the Seattle Sea Wolves uh, playing the uh, New England Free Jacks. It was a close game. Uh, figures with the Sea Wolves, uh, and to be fair, this game should have been close. Uh, sea Wolves won twenty nine to twenty one. Um, really, not much to say. It looked like uh, they dominated, not by much. Um, it looks like it was genuinely a close game. Um, it, Free Jacks had uh, one more conversion and uh, dominated the passes, but it just wasn't enough. Um, you know, the four penalty kicks and no penalty kicks. Yeah, yeah. The, the penalty kicks is really what set this game apart. Uh, and then for my next game, uh, we have the Miami Sharks uh, beating the NOLA Gold 42-27. to uh, This one uh, was a good game for them. They needed this win, especially a high-scoring win for them. Uh, it's definitely the most points they've scored in a game. Um, NOLA just keeps feeling more and more mid every, uh, every time I see them play. Um, the uh, Miami Sharks were 3-for-4 on penalty uh, kicks uh, compared to NOLA's 1. And then uh, it was about even from there uh, in terms of passes. Uh, no penalty tries, no drop goals. Um, and then conversions, uh, Miami just had one more conversion than NOLA. And that'll sum up my games. Major League Rugby. So, my first game was uh, the score. With a, I mean, I expected Chicago to win, but the amount of scoring was a shock to me. Uh, mm -hmm. So they've had back-to-back -back weeks where they put up 50 points. One was expected because it was against the Anthem. This one was kind of unexpected. Uh, the 54 to 31 Hounds beat Los, An Los Angeles. They had eight tries. Uh, they were also five of six on conversions. They uh, thoroughly outpassed them, so they're really moving the ball. Uh, uh, LA was a little bit more disciplined, only had they had four or less penalties. Uh, uh, more carries, less tackles, uh, more breakdowns. Uh, they have had uh, they tied on lineouts, but uh, Chicago had more scrums, uh, and LA had more resets. Uh, they're uh, Star for the LA I gave it to uh, Semi Kunabali Kuntani, who had seven points from a try, seventeen tackles, uh, fourteen carries, and one hundred seventy-eight meters. And then Nate Augsburger for the Hounds, who had seventeen points from three tries. He had thirteen carries and uh, 
144 meters. Uh, my old glory lost. So, and then we had uh, a surprise here. I didn't expect Utah to be able to beat San Diego, though San Diego's games have all been close. Uh, surprising here that they actually had less tries than San Diego, but they made up for it with uh, an ungodly amount of penalty kicks. Uh, they also nailed all their conversions. Um, they're more disciplined. Uh, they had more carries, uh, and then they won the uh, re uh, set pieces game. I gave their uh, starter Joel Hodgson, who had 18 points from uh, the four penalty kicks and three conversions. He had had 392 kicking meters. And then San Diego, I gave their star to Connor Tupali, who had seven points from a try convert, 178 kicking meters and 77 rushing meters. Here is how we did on our pick'em. Kind of a. Uh, all did pretty well. Mid week. Yeah. We're all uh. Well, right around the same place here. Kyle's three game is yeah. back, but. And here is how the standings sit right now. Chicago Hounds over here. In second place, four three and one, despite the fact they've literally beaten nobody. <laughs> but that yeah. that division is so. So bad. That's awful. Yeah. Anthem's carrying. Yep, Anthem's so good. Negative 30. <laughs> 30 Negative 30 is insane. Yeah, the East is not good. Nobody's um, allowed more than 210 points, and Anthem's almost at 350. Well, Los Angeles did 222. But, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Were, like 100. I, I, no. I, I, <laughs> no, nobody's allowed more than 225. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Dude, not 125 more points allowed though is wow. It's ridiculous. I went for an 80 bomb. Not everybody can beat Toronto. I know. Uh, Anthem's flirting with it. Yeah. Uh, here I I got some stats of some league leaders. So, Dallas guy leads it with tries. So nice. Yeah. Kind of surprising. Yeah, I think both of the points come from kicks, so. Yeah. All the leaders are right, players. but you'd still expect the. The fact that he has three more tries than everybody else, yeah. though. Yeah. Than anyone else, and on the team he's on, I would have thought somebody on Houston, Free Jacks, or. But I guess those teams are more uh, like even, so they split it amongst each amongst their players. Also yeah. true. Must Deeper. shuffle it all to one guy. Yeah, that's true. And here is the pick on. All right, I am going Warriors. I'm going Warriors. Yeah, yeah Warriors. Um, uh, I'm going oh, gold. gold. Even though uh, I want to name it the anthem, uh, but the gold. Yeah, I'm going to go anthem. Destroyed. If the gold, you're all right, Kyle. I'm going to say it right now. I'm saying it right now. Kyle wins this league automatically if the anthem pulls it off. I'll I'll give it to Kyle. <laughs> I'll straight up give it to him. <laughs> we'll still do it, if though. If they we'll do it. We'll still do all the picks. We'll just make Kyle, like, super gold. We'll still do it. Yeah. But he automatically gets the dub at the end. So. But I'm going it, to Yeah, it's like calling a tie. It's like calling a tie at that point. Yeah, it's yeah. like calling a tie Anthem right is now. a golden snitch. <laughs> uh, this game is... Uh, Jackals, Sharks? Oh, yeah, Battle of Mid, give me Sharks. Sharks are hot right now. Uh, yeah, sharks are hot. That's why I'm going with them. And it's in Miami, so I'll go sharks. I trust you guys. I'll go sharks, but I would not go sharks if it was a closer win. Give me saber cats. Considering they won by 15 when they shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, saber cats easy. Three jacks. Three jacking it. Yeah. Was that your free jacking it, Kyle? Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can move free jacks at least to the bottom of S, potentially top of A. I put uh, top of A. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave Seattle alone. It's, they have two Seattle. losses, so it's hard to justify S. You can probably put, man, it's so hard. Chicago it's and Dallas so are mid. <laughs> uh, you I can put, put Chicago, Chicago ahead of Dallas, maybe. 
I, I would be Dallas willing to move Utah, Chicago up, that's almost. fine. I would move, yeah, I'd move Old Glory down. Yeah, Old Glory down. I would just say All top of D tier. Yeah. That's what that's what my thought is at least. That seems fair. Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, no, my, didn't Miami beat Nola? Oh yeah. Yeah. I know it's hard to. I would put them yeah. ahead of them yeah. right now. And going yeah, I'm to, uh, Utah good. beat San Diego, but San Diego is usually good. So. I'm fine with that. I'm yeah. fine with that. Just move them down. <laughs> cool. These yeah, it's still in. three teams. <laughs> Kind of above everyone else, and then everyone else is mid, and then yeah, it's like a it's like a NASCAR race where there's just different clumps of cars. You have your yeah. leaders, and then you have your pack, and then you have Anthem. Well, and then you have Danica Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say yeah, Danica, Danica, Danica crashed three laps ago. Danica crashed yeah. <laughs> ten laps in. That's bold of you to assume she can make it that far. I Danica's once again like only... me playing an NASCAR racing game. Oh, intentionally crashing? Immediately crashing. All right, AFL. The Wait. Orphy. I didn't think about this. Uh, do any of you have the Hawks? I think I might have no, screwed No, nobody up. had the Hawks. Okay, I did not make a slide. I didn't think about that. One of you guys Ace. has the Eagles. Did one of you guys have the Eagles? No, nobody had no. the Eagles. Okay, perfect. I'm good. But I, I think it's... I think it's fine. Kyle, you go first because I need to at least pull up the. Uh, yeah, you good. The uh, AFL slide for. All right. So first up, I had the Adelaide Crows play the Essendon Bombers. Uh, this one was a, a close game. I would assume a close game between these two. Probably leaning more towards Bombers, but uh, you know, Crows edged it out. Or sorry, Excuse Crows me? lost. Crows lost. Uh, both both uh, teams in the second and third quarters uh, were able to pull away a little bit, but they just kept coming back to uh, right in the middle, edging each other uh, Excuse for me? the lead at various times. Uh, we had a lead change uh, four times and almost got a fifth one, but uh, Adelaide just couldn't quite pull it off, and the, the Bombers won it. Did Adelaide um, almost have a 20-point lead? Yeah, uh, it was about 19. That's rough. In the third, too. Uh, I feel like blowing 20-point leads is fairly common in this league. Yeah, it's common not, in this one. I, I when you get up to 30s, it's hard to I do. I was going to say, 30-plus is probably where it's Falcons going to Falcon territory at this point. Yeah. I've noticed quite a few teams. It'll say, like, in the matchup's biggest lead, both te- like, if both teams had a lead, it's pretty common to see 20 for one side. Yeah, the game of one. And yeah. then this game was just another very poor Dockers performance. <laughs> um, <laughs> they lost to the Eagles of all teams, 105 to 68. Two wins in a row. Yeah, that's two in a row for the Eagles and two losses in a row for the Dockers. Two bad losses at that. Yeah, um, I don't trust the Dockers anymore for sure. Yeah, I no longer. They had a they had a really hot start to the season, but after that, they've just completely fallen off. Um, they docked. Yeah, not. Yeah, they scored three points in the first, uh, 18 in the second, and then uh, eight points in the third. Three points? It is impressively bad. You undersold them scoring three points in the first against, again, (laughs) the the Eagles. Eagles. At home. Oh, wait, actually, I don't know. I think that's the worst quarter for any team this season. I think think it is. I think it was West Coast at home. A lot oh, of these it... games, they have a lot of neutral site games. Yeah, right. yeah, that's where, yeah. Team on the left is home. Yeah. But I don't, uh, I don't okay, think... I'm used to team on right being, yeah, it's down under, they flip it. Yeah, you're right. They they Europeanized it, all that. I know they're not uh, Europe, No, no, this it's is England. It. They were, well, I mean, yeah, they were yeah. a colony prison, prison yeah. colony. But my point is soccer, and soccer does this bull crap, so Europe. Uh, yeah. I think the rugby <laughs> league does it too. Rugby yeah, does but do it uh, they scored right. over half their points alone in the fourth quarter, um, but it wasn't enough. They scored, what, 30, 39 points in the fourth, which is the only respectable uh, yeah, quarter they had. But, you know, it was a shit show, to say the least. Okay. Right, you get together, Nate. <laughs> yep. So, 
obviously goofed, but not the end of the world. Very easy way to get around this. So, um, so the first slide, I, uh, my two teams played each other. Uh, undefeated Giants for uh, going on the road against the Blues, and the Blues won this game, um, one seventeen to ninety eight. Uh, a little bit of a surprise, but uh, not really at the same time since it's the Pat method. Um, both really good teams, uh, and the, the Blues came out on top this time. Um, edged them out. Um, logged them for sure. Uh, uh, so the Blues had more goals and quite a few more behinds. Um, so that was the big difference there. Um, uh, quite frankly, 15 behinds is a ton, so this game could have been a lot worse. Um, had the Blues um, it looks like for the most part dominated this game more uh, disposals it did have less kicks uh, but they had more handballs, more free kicks uh, less turnovers uh, did have a few less tackles um, but they won the, uh, the total lead time with nice 23 seconds versus the Giants 50 minutes so to be fair the Giants were winning for half the game. It's probably the closest total lead time I've seen out of any game so far. Um, it's usually out just with these teams. It'll be like 120 minutes to like five or something stupid. Yeah. Um, so uh, Blues um, we're leading for most of this game, but the Giants did have a lead for a while. Giants lead scorer was Josh Kelly. Three goals, three, 23 disposals, 16 kicks, seven handballs, and six sparks for 119 fantasy points. And Blues lead scorer was Patrick Cripps. 39 disposals, 13 kicks, 26 handballs, and two marks for a total of 126 fantasy points. The key differentiator, ultimately, the Giants were not very efficient inside the 50. Blues were 63%, I guess, relatively compared to the Blues uh, versus the Giants uh, at 52.9%. So the Blues were far more efficient uh, in that regard. So, like I said, uh, Gi uh, Giants had a 22 point lead. So it could have been Falcons, could have Falcon, but. As we mentioned, I don't think a 20 to 29 point lead in this league warrants that anymore, considering uh, how common they are. Um, and the Blues' biggest lead was 30. So Blues will travel on the road to face a, a undefeated Cats, looking to knock off the last undefeated team left. I do not think it'll happen. And the Giants won against the Lions. So, um, or sorry, we'll win. <laughs> Um, and the other game, um, which, like I said, forgot to do the slides. That's my bad. Assumed someone had the Hawks. That was dumb of me. But uh, You just gave it to uh, breath and you wanted to blank it from your memory. And honestly, it wasn't that depressing. <laughs> just uh, just <laughs> kind of overconfident yeah. that I didn't have to do the slide because they lost. And I was like, wait, nobody has the Hawks. So a um, little bummed out about this one. Really thought Northern Melbourne was going to win this, uh, considering they're usually at least scoring a decent amount of points. Um, but this game, uh, <coughs> just proven that their defense is just this bad. Um, a lot of another They're 113 anthem points. Bad. Um, anthem bad defensively, not anthem bad scoring wise though. Yeah. At least, at least North Melbourne hasn't had a historically bad scoring game so far this year. I've seen a lot of teams score 30 something and North Melbourne has scored about 65 to 80 points Did you give me up each 100? game. Yeah. So I, they're just allowing way too much. Um, so I think they are turning a tide in terms of where they were last year. They weren't scoring last year either. So there, there's improvements despite not having a win. Uh, but they were thoroughly outplayed by a really bad team. So uh, less disposals, less kicks, less handballs. Uh, uh, yeah, really yeah. inefficient inside the 50. Says a lot because the Hawks, you know, 50%, not, not great. Uh, but uh, they're thirty eight percent on the year. But yeah, that is crazy. Wow. I even that's really bad. So they were underperforming for the year. <laughs> for the year, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, those stats we don't really cover. I don't cover too much. Um, more turnovers. Um, uh, they had less turnovers turnovers than their average. But this is a key differentiator. It looks like. Uh, Time uh, possession battle was thoroughly won by the Hawks, forty-seven to thirty-four. Probably the biggest margin I've seen out of any of my team so far. Um, yeah, wow. less marks inside the fifty, less contested marks, uh, less marks total, and then as we saw, less goals and behind. Thirteen minutes of lead time, though. 
13 minutes of lead time, but like I said, quite the large uh, time in front d differential and the biggest lead for the Hawks is 46 uh, with in the quarter four. It tells you when it was too. That's interesting. I should start adding these as well. Um, the last goal is kind of fun. Um, so they yeah, led uh, halfway through the court uh, first, but beyond that, they fell apart. So um, RIP my ruse. Um, and because I didn't know who they're, uh, I forgot to schedule them. I don't have who they're playing next week, but it's a loss. So we'll, we'll find um, out and pick them. We'll find out in the pick them, but we all are picking against them. Yeah. All right. Unless if Kyle has the balls to pick them too in the yeah. same week, they're, he's picking a what's their face? No, I can only go for one meme a week. <laughs> all right. Yeah. AFL. All right. Well, no. Otherwise, you just ruin it if you go for all of them every week. Yeah. Cool. Uh, first one, I had part Adelaide Power at the Con One Magpies, and I officially believe in the Magpies again. Uh, yeah, they beat fair. the Power um, one twenty three yeah. to eighty one. Shout out to the forty one point quarter. Uh, yeah, still coming with their scoring seventeen goals and twenty one behinds. So just think of how much worse this game could have been. Good lord, twenty one behinds is insane. Top yeah. 15 was bad. <laughs> yeah, so inside of 50, they're both pretty good effect uh, efficiency. They had the same amount of free kicks. Uh, Port Adelaide did have more hit outs. Uh, Collingwood had more clearances. Uh, much less turnovers. Uh, about the same on marks. And they both uh, led for roughly the same amount. 10 minute difference. Uh, <clears throat> for the power, I gave Mitch uh, Georgie. George Jades, oh, that's a weird name. Uh, their star, three goals, uh, ten disposals, four marks, one sixty-three meters. And then for Collingwood, I gave it to Patrick uh, Lipnitsky, who had four goals, sixteen disposals, a mark, a tackle, a uh, clear, and three hundred nine uh, meters. Uh, next game, I had the Gold Coast Suns at the Sydney Swans. Swans won one ten to fifty-seven. Uh, they Pretty much killed them in the first quarter, then went into sleep, uh, and only scored one point in the second quarter, but still had to lead at <laughs> halftime. And, and then they woke up, and then they had 46, <laughs> 46 and 30 in the last two quarters. <laughs> so, <laughs> they literally went to bed for one quarter, and then, uh... That's crazy! That is so foul! They made up for it in the third, to say the least. That's crazy. Yeah. So they had more goals, one less behind, but they had so many more goals, it didn't matter. Uh, they won disposals, but just barely efficiency. Both teams weren't great efficiently, both under 50%. Free kicks, the Suns had more. Uh, <clears throat> really hit out clearances and turnovers. They're all about the same. Marks inside 50, though, is where Sydney got uh, a lot of their their uh, points probably uh, and they were in front the entire game <laughs> so even with falling asleep for a quarter uh, for the Suns they gave their uh, star to uh, Braden for Fioroni who had one goal one behind 27 disposal 7 marks 2 tackles 2 clearances and 344 meters for the Swans they gave it to Brody Grundy who had one goal one behind 24 disposal 4 marks 11 tackles 29 hit outs <laughs> Six clearances and 150 meters. Uh, and then on to my last game, which was also my uh, bet game. Uh, the Geelong Cats beat the Brisbane Lions 63-37. to So multiple teams had more points in one quarter than Brisbane did in their entire game. That being said, they actually did have the lead for most <laughs> of the game. It uh, wow. Geelong didn't take the lead until, until like the... Well, the third quarter is when they took the lead for final, but they didn't take a lead for the first time until, like, right before the end of the second quarter. Blues might be able to beat them. Yeah. So, uh, the, and then the key difference here is that uh, Brisbane just did not hit uh, efficiently. If they hit more of their uh, <clears throat> behinds, the game could have been a lot closer because they actually scored. Geelong scored one more time, but the difference was that they made more goals as, as opposed to behind. Both teams were not very efficient. Uh, it was really just a defensive struggle. Lots of turnovers, lots of clearances. 
Geelong had a lot more hit outs, but I gave uh, Geelong star to Tyson Stengel, who had uh, two goals, 17 disposals, two marks, three tackles, two clearances, and 373 meters. And then uh, Dane Zorko for the Brisbane, who had two goals, 26 disposals, eight marks, six tackles, two clearances, and 641 meters. Uh, for a goal game around the league that none of us had, uh, the Western Bulldogs beat the Saint Kilda Saints 124 to 64. So it's just a stopping there. Another beat down. Yeah. Uh, and here is how we did on the pick em. So we picked wrong on that first game. Right. <laughs> we all picked against the Magpies, and the Magpies was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with the Dockers. Um, oh, I messed up the last thing. The uh, Hawks beat the Kangaroos, so that should be red. There you go. There's another mistake. You can dunk on me now. Ha! <laughs> yep. How dare you? Yep. Uh, do you need to fix the scores? Am I actually plus one or? No. The... Well, are you guys actually minus one or? No, no it cancels no. out because you're just those, those those rating the the record is right. The, the, the... Your, your son's pick nets zero. No, he was just he was oh. wondering if it on, oh, on, the, on the the thing that comes from a different spreadsheet. This oh, is okay. Just, yeah. User error. Yeah. yeah. So here's the standing. So we have the eight teams in the playoffs and the ten that are out. Cats are the last undefeated <laughs> team, but you have three teams that have only have one loss as well. So, and it's actually still like the FRS still likes the Swans the most. That's so. interesting. Then again, once again, it's made for American football, so I don't know how well it converts. Uh, like even this says that technically says the kangaroos are worse than the uh, anthem. I'm right, baby. <laughs> yeah. My so then again, they first. do have like <clears throat> what, like a hundred and fifty more points allowed than anybody else. What's the yes. next highest? Five five seventy six. If, yeah. Not great. Yeah, five seventy six. Yeah, well, like I said, they're. I guess they're yeah. one of the lower teams scoring wise, but they're. Yeah, I don't know. Just bad. Pain. Yeah, they scored more than the crows. <laughs> yeah. Crows suck, yeah. Kyle. You're the league leaders. Nope. So. Go Jesse. Go Latchy. Hey, uh, Harry Sheezel over here with the most marks for North Melbourne. Most oh, okay. yeah, yeah, duh, yeah. Ruse, Tristan and Ruse representative. They're very. I don't know why we said. Shout out to them. My yeah. team's represented here. That's a guy who must be really good at defense, despite the fact yeah. you give up a billion points. <laughs> yep. I wonder if he was at like a. Their la uh, their draft pick or something. He's the one good guy. So <laughs> try to make up play yeah. play the entire field. He's like a center fielder. Holy crap! That first game. Ugh. Demons Tigers. Give me uh, demons are coming off a of bye. Give me demons. I think I'm gonna go demons here too. I'll go demons as well. That's where I was leaning towards. So. I believe in the. Magpies and then I'm again. gonna be leaving. Yeah, I believe in the magpies again. I'll believe in the Magpies. Uh, I'm going Giants. I'll I'm go gonna, Giants. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Giants were a fluke. It wasn't a fluke. They were facing a really good team. They were on I the mean, road. I, Giants were also like the best I'm, team, weren't they? I'm going power. Yeah, but again, they were facing a really good team in the Blues. The Blues aren't a bad team. They're oh, they're fair. fourth in the league. And um, it was on the road. It was it's the Pat method. If it was at the Giants, the Giants probably would have won. <laughs> yeah, I'm, go I'm going power here. I have no clue between these two stupid teams, yeah, so I'm going the Pat method. Either. Yeah, may as well. If they're close, it's worth it. Uh, Crows. Uh, yeah, Crows. Yeah, I, I have to take uh, Crows. The first yeah. hard one. I'm going believe in my kitty cats. Meow. Yeah, give me cats. Gatsby says hi. <laughs> hi, Gatsby. I want to believe in my blues so bad. But a but cat it's just appeared of, to say hi to us. Hang on. I, I don't care about that. <laughs> well, that's not true. It was the divine. That's, that's not affected my decision. 
I feel like this is like a, an exam right now, my Scantron, <laughs> where I've I've suspiciously picked too many road teams. Um, so I I'm probably gonna go cats here. <laughs> and it's just like, man, I think the right answer is the road team. <laughs> but this is a suspicious pattern. <laughs> Sorry, blues. I have no clue what to make sense of the bulldog. Bulldog versus I, Ducker. I have no idea. I don't know if I'm the Dockers I'm suck right now. I'm going Bulldogs right now. So, Dockers by 20. You're welcome, <laughs> Kyle. Uh, yeah, give me Dockers. I'm going to go Bulldogs. Suns uh, also kind of stink right now. And the Eagles I'm going to go Suns, right though. I'm going to go Suns. You know, let's go. Three game win streak for the Eagles. I'll go with Kyle on this one. I'll go Suns. <laughs> But I got a feeling Jackson might actually get that one right. Swans. I'll go Swans. I'm doing a lot yeah, of the world teams, so. That's, that's literally the only reason I didn't pick Blues. <laughs> like I said, suspicious. <laughs> it's too suspicious. I even All right, can I, can I interject here for just a second? Yes. So, for anyone that requires clarity... The pat method is not just to pick the home team willy nilly. Yes, yeah, so, oh, you know, it's just it's just <laughs> the catch all term now. Yeah. It is it is specifically a in a situation where the teams are relatively evenly matched. You side with the home team because home field advantage is worth statistically a few points. Which, if they're within a few points, that makes sense. Um, if the team right. is significantly better than the other team, then you just go with the significantly better team. <laughs> for full clarity because I've, I've i've have heard just home team mentioned a lot where it's like mm, they're kind of close it's not the path well, pat, pat method to still pick the away team if they're close it's a catch-all term now patrick you have to accept it accept it's like it. the mendoza line you said you're stuck with it now it's what you're known for the only the only line i i'm aware of is the dalton line <laughs> mendoza is the mid line Mendoza is below the midline. Mendoza. Oh yeah, the yeah Mendoza is the mid to bad. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. All right, let's go to the uh, tier list. Doug, do you uh, want small? Uh, two feet here. Yeah, I would say C. A, uh, Eagles are winning small. right now. Magpies are winning right now. Who do you want to move up to be? Maybe Bombers. I wouldn't say they're that good. I'm fine with C I as think, it is. I think the Bulldogs are in the playoffs right now. No, do that. Do that yeah, and fair. leave everything else alone. That's yeah. satisfying. Yeah. The reason across the board is so funny. No, Giants can say that. I, I don't like Maybe aesthetic things. At top of uh, Melbourne didn't play, though. Wait, you you bumping them up over them before they even got a chance to play? Damn. Yeah, because Sydney uh, had a very good game except for one quarter. And the SRS really likes Sydney. That's true. Cool. Port and Adelaide that. did, by a technical standard, have a bad loss. Technically, I don't care. I think they, they should go down to B. No, I no, I think this is fine as this. Beat the Saints, right? Yep, uh, I, think yeah, I think it's fine as this. I think it's fine as this. That's good. I like that. Uh, move poor Adelaide down. No. 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 I'm not fine. moving them I'm down. I'm fine with the aesthetic three, three, threes across the board. So. We could change it next week, but at least for one week. For one week, it's gonna be pretty. All right, money. so losing money with Jackson right now uh, is not losing money because we're up 620%. But Winning. <laughs> I'm doing uh, – I didn't – so the first bet I placed was the, the Giants minus 110 against the Lions, but I'm not super confident in that one. But when I was going back to get the screenshot for this, uh, I saw Panthers plus money against the showboats. So I put $5 down on the Michigan Panthers as well. So – that's crazy. Hopefully both those cash. And we can I think up, they should. Be up but even more, you know? 
Yeah, you might start getting up to the point that you might be able to bump up to ten dollar bets. Yeah. We have to call this making money with Jackson, you know. Yeah. That's a good point. And right now you're up six hundred twenty percent, so you're not losing. Yeah. You should just bet your whole life. I did saving, lose the first one. The very first one I lost. <laughs> we did lose. Yeah. I haven't lost since, baby. No, I, I missed uh, the third one. Oh, friend. you did miss one other one. You went bet indoor week, yeah. football. Yeah. Okay. All right, Nate, you got you got it. For the first time in a very long time, I did not see any notable choke jobs in any of our leagues. Just the Ray um, is choking from start to finish. Yes. <laughs> I, I actually... So I, yeah, that would have been funny to pick, but no. Um, so I'll share my screen here. And we are going to travel back in time to 2012. Back when I was stealing Kyle's ID. I mean, um... Well, you uh, have a Kyle ID. I have a Kyle ID too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have like three of them. <laughs> That's crazy. Fuck you guys. <laughs> to be fair, you gave me yours on the last day of school senior year. Oh, fair. That's funny. Yeah, Still. I just remember finding those one day. I was like, oh crap, I love you, <laughs> you money for this. But, uh, oh well. Um, but we are going to travel back in time to our sophomore year, um, <coughs> where uh, <coughs> the Pittsburgh Power played the largest comeback in a reg uh, arena of football history. Um, the score was seven forty-one to seventeen. They were playing the Predators, um, and the Predators were up, uh, quite but not, a bit. Not the at current the Predators, the old Predators. Not old Predators. Yes, thank you. <coughs> um, and to go into the half, the power did have the ball, try to ease the, the deficit a bit, but they threw an interception. So they were down astronomically bad. But wait, it gets worse. The Predators start off the half scoring a touchdown. So it was 48 to 17. Uh, feeling very, uh, feeling like the Falcon Super Bowl uh, right now. Um, where you just end on a really piss poor note and it just gets worse, but things turn around the power do score a touchdown and uh, get an interception off the predators thinking that'll shift the momentum right nope uh a powers quarterback threw an interception the very next play so uh looks bad again <laughs> but it gets crazier the receiver mike washington knocked the ball loose and then eventually the power received a score getting the ball to cut the deficit to 48 to 32. And that was kind of a, a back and forth, a couple stops. Um, and Power got another pick. And slowly but surely, they made it 48 to 44, chipping away back at this lead. And they do eventually, um, I think once we get to them tying the game at 51, it goes to overtime. That's something I didn't know, but I'll, I'll be going to the breakdown and showing that. Um, but the Predators kicked a late field goal to make it 51 44. Thought it was over, right? Psych. Um, they scored a touchdown within 17 seconds of that field goal. Tied the game, and the uh, game went to overtime. Uh, defense held the Predators to a field goal to make it 54-51, and in response, they scored a touchdown to end the game. So, um, sorry, control. so scroll down here. Article, article, article. So it's just kind of a breakdown of what happened Quarter by quarter, so it's twenty to seven. wasn't a uh, not not great quarter for the power, but not unheard of. Uh, you know, uh, we've seen crazy things from twenty to seven. It was really a, a start of the second where things started to get ugly. They did score a touchdown there late. Uh, twenty seven. I didn't even realize this. So they scored a touchdown with twenty one seconds left. They allowed a touchdown and then threw the pick on the final play of the half. Um, so it did say it was like towards the end of the half. They did not mention that. Um, and then there's that touchdown uh, to, to put them down even more. But they, it looks like they uh, scored a couple touchdowns within a minute of each other about. Um, and then had a really good fourth quarter. Um, and then forced that field goal and uh, drove down. And the uh, game lasted three hours and five minutes. Player of the game is Justin Roper. 
Um, for the Preds. I, d I don't know how you could give him play of the game when hey, his Bobby team choked. Bobby Scipio, he tried to kill so, a person. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I don't condone killing people, by the way. But, hey, uh, that, that just adds to the fun. So, um, He so, was part of I, the again, uh, chief, uh, whatchamacallit, um, what's the uh, HBO show for preseason? Hard, 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 knock. hard knocks. Hard knocks. Knocks. Yeah. He was he was on the chief season of Hard Knocks. That's hilarious. So for my last bit of the night for the crazy story of the week, we are breaking down not all that went down into this because like I said, I want to save some of it for the one year anniversary of me and Jackson bullying Antonio Brown in the live in, in YouTube chat. Still probably my favorite football moment of all time. And that includes freaking 28 to three. It's close. It's really close. Make it funny. Antonio Brown was really funny. Um, but uh, let me just scroll down a bit. I, cause there was a part of the article um, that I wanted to start off at. Uh, wait, her, I think it was right. Uh, okay. So their first problem was, uh, as the article mentioned, there's a worker comp bill. Um, say New York sought out the 1.5 million from the empire <coughs> to allow the team to practice in the state. Um, so just a bunch of crap here. And, uh, Antonio Brown kind of dropped the ball here. Um, and they decided to fire their coach two days before the start of the season over philosophical coaching differences. Yep. Gunslinger's um, a coach now. Which is <laughs> wild. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, despite the fact that they did win back-to-back -back championships in the league, um, he was locked in long-term for a couple more years at the time. Um, so... <clears throat> Brown proclaimed he was a sole owner of the empire, which is uh, uh, another thing that kind of pissed these guys off too. Um, so just everything at this point, Brown was saying, is kind of dropping the ball on. Um, so and there was one other thing, throwing down. Um, does it mention him not paying the player? It should at some point. I should mention also they he fired the next coach as well. We brought it up earlier uh, over uh, I think similar issues, uh, aka well, Antonio Brown being a yeah, now he's the douche. Albany Firebirds coach, the guy, the second guy he right. fired. Right, like I said, we had mentioned him up before, yeah. and then ultimately they uh, after uh, <laughs> I didn't even realize he did this. <laughs> um, after what uh, the players were dogging on AB for not paying him and all that. Um, I did not realize he was shirtless on camera and says, you think I care what an NAL player says about me. Um, that's really freaking funny and claimed he was giving them the opportunity to live out their dreams despite not paying them what they deserve. So, and I guess that was the final straw. So, um, I really did kind of a skim of this. This whole situation is a disaster. Um, there's Casper Nova, love... our guy. Yes, sir. Uh, and shout out to well, no, Ryan no, Poles no. in the background. Yeah. I'm just yeah, kidding. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just see him co uh, quoted. But, yeah, so um, could go a lot more into it, but... Uh, we'll save that for the year anniversary. Yeah. Do you have it your phone, right? <laughs> I do. I, I have it on my calendar. I'm excited. All right, well, anybody else got any closing statements to make? I'm good. Nope. Yep. All right, we'll see everybody Actually, next week. Oh, oh, boy. Yes. Do you want a fun oh, story? Go ahead, Pat. Is this so, the did I ever tell any of you that I have actually seen an AF2 team in person? No. No. Who'd you see? I've seen the Stockton Lightning. Okay. And... Do you want another bit of a, a fun story to go along with that? Sure. So, Nate, fun fact. I saw them a year before 
they signed Super Bowl champion Chris Hogan, Manuel Wright, <laughs> who was a bench player on the 07 Giants. Oh, you're going to ruin his life like that? Bringing up the O7 recorded Giants. two tackles. That's really interesting. And then it's called hilarious. the AF2. <laughs> Unbelievable. There and was then, a hold on that play. There was a hold. Clearly. <laughs> That's funny, though. Lost to a freaking team that not only so, was led by Eli Manning, but had a player on the team from the AFL to their AF2. Yes, uh, the AF2. No longer that, even a top promptly... five team all time. I, I take them out of consideration top 10 team all time now. That promptly folded like, like three years after I saw That's them. Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, that double downs on crazy stories of the week. That's uh, it, it does. It does. When does when I was it. like, I had to like go back and I for whatever reason I misremembered. I was like, I thought that her name was the Thunder, and I had to do some internet searching before I was like, oh shit, their name was the Lightning. That's why I was thinking Thunder. The Thunder played in Portland. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I saw them when before before even moving to Manuka. So. Beyond years ago, well, you like, yourself. I know, I know. It's all all it takes is for anyone to like page uh, to any it. any of yeah. our names. Jackson, Jackson, he he's gonna make you have to edit it. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean literally, my Twitter handle that I have linked in my account is my full legal name, and there's only two people called that in this, the entire country. Nice. Believe it or not, yeah. I'm not the the teacher in Nebraska. What, you're not? No. And believe it or not, there are at least three people with my exact name, Damn. two of which live in this house. Nice. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know if any of the rest of you will ever get a chance to see an AFL team, but I have. And I'm pretty sure they lost <laughs> because they were really good at losing. Probably find the game. Yes. Arena fan probably would tell us what game it was. The, the the closest thing is that me and Kyle probably annoyed uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yep. Because <laughs> because yeah, band camp. yeah, because our band camp thing was right next to where the football team practiced. That's amazing. Yep. Multi million dollar quarterback, and you bothered him. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, but he was like yeah. a freshman. Well, I got a signed ball from former uh, Northwestern coach. Just saying. The guy that just got fired. Pat Fitzgerald. I have a signature. Yes, sir. Nice. Did it, yes, sir. Does it have any comments about uh, tradition <laughs> in the locker room? <laughs> I wish. We were in junior high when I went to that game. I wish I could remember. Hey, Trevor Simeon said he had nothing but fond Wait, memories of being a... Were you not wearing Illini <laughs> stuff when you got something signed by him? Yeah, Northwestern legend no. Trevor Simeon. Because oh. mo- most of my Illini stuff's hand me down, ironically. Oh, fair. Um, I do have a couple shirts that I bought, but like my hoodie that I wear all the time, that was my brother's at the time. I thought I Northwestern moved small. to Michigan at Ryan Field twice. Nice. I need to remember who Northwestern played when I went. I just remember. I need to actually go to the game. This year. Oh, wait. Sure. Are my ears. I need to bring a lawn chair if I decide to go to that game this year. Yeah, because they're ch- changing the chair now the stadium. Yeah. I'm kind of uh, well, they're, stadium. they're playing at their practice field. Okay. It was a nice stadium. I liked Ryan Field. I thought it was a very pretty stadium. I, I uh, They want to make it I like the towers. different, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they might keep the towers, but... Are we still streaming? Yeah, I haven't Probably. streamed. <laughs> We're just chatting about <laughs> Big Ten West football, baby. R.I.P. Yes. Never forget. It's something we, we, we all oh, have oh, in no, common. Oh, no, we... If, you can't forget Ten. it. You, you can't forget it. It's a, it's a, it's a novelty. They were what, zero and seven or zero and eight or whatever in Big Ten championship games. Yep, never won. Yep. I wonder why. Because uh, it was usually Iowa who won, and they were mega. I, almost like the talent disparity was. Remember when Iowa went twelve and zero? Yeah. Yeah. Then they lost. You know, what, you know what you should do as a bit though when. Uh when college football starts is you should only cover the Mac. I'd appreciate that. The Mac. Probably... I can't, uh, out of my love for the Mac. Hey, whack, to be fair, by covering the Mac the first two weeks, we would cover Big Ten. Yeah. 
Maybe AC <laughs> will move to the Mac one day. Very unlikely. No. We're probably all, makes honestly no in college football. We all might have. We all might choose one team from every division. Oh, fair. So, like Nate that. would have Nate would have Abilene in the FCS. I'd probably have Wofford. I don't know what Kyle would pick, but we, then we get D two and D three, and maybe NAIA, maybe JUCO. Never maybe forget one. that uh, go to JJC team. Yeah. So crazy. To national championship. Yeah. Too bad I can't make the joke that JJC had a national championship more recently than Michigan anymore. To my dad. That's funny. But I can make you it can to make you it guys. JJC had a national Illinois. championship more recently than your schools. And we don't even have a football team anymore. Hey, my my school just never had one, so i Are saying... you sure they didn't have one in like the 1900s? <laughs> uh, We're talking fo- football or in general? Yeah, football, football. My That's my school did like all of the other football. all of the other sports, but definitely when I was there, at least there was not a football team. Yeah. yeah. But oh. do you have the world's longest field goal, 69 yards? Jake Bates could make that. He probably could. <laughs> and he wouldn't need a kicking probably. game. I do hey, love hey, we don't talk about that. <laughs> I wouldn't bring it up as much if it weren't 69 yards. Yeah. Yeah, he got an assist. It was nice. Nice. All right. Well, okay. I'm going to stop streaming now. <laughs>